across the from Cisco is Cass Memorial Stadium, where the number one in the country brings their dynamic bow of toss and teams in to take another step towards a possible national title game. It is a beautiful night for football in the Bay Area. And for the 11th time in their 128 years of football, Cal faces the number one team in the country looking for their first win ever over the top team. Today, it's number one Oregon taking on Cal. Welcome to College Football on Versus presented by Windows 7. Let's take a look at the BCS standings. Auburn and TCU, they have already taken care of business. Now it's up to Oregon as they are the top-ranked team in the country for the first time in their history. Hello again, everybody. Hello, Glenn Parker. I'm Ron Thulin. Everybody knows that Oregon comes in as the top-ranked offense in the country. We've all heard and read about their speed, but I think what really is impressive as far as Oregon is concerned is their balance. Four straight games now, they have rushed and passed for over 230 yards each. Yeah, you have to break it down to components when you look at their offense, and it starts with Michael James. Very good speed at the perimeter. That puts pressure on the linebackers in the secondary to slide. Then you come out the backside with Darren Thomas and the way he can run, and don't forget that he can throw and he's got Jeff Mail. so speed to each perimeter puts pressure on your secondary and then you've got a receiver too very good job with this offense of getting after you well Cal's job today is to try to do something that nobody else has been able to do and that's control the tempo of the game the question is and it's a simple question Glenn how do they do it well I think you attack the mesh point of the zone read offense with either a linebacker or defensive back. what you've got to do is hit them and when you do that that allows your linebackers to get into their fits and then you have to have great special teams play as well. Your special teams, your putter, have to be as good as anybody on your defense in getting you field position and helping out. Well, obviously, this is a home field advantage for Cal. With more on that, here's Lewis Johnson. Well, a packed house here in Memorial Stadium, Ron. Green are hoping for history, 10-0, and 0, but the are looking for that big upset, and here's what they may have on their side this afternoon. These numbers say that Cal has an advantage here at home. Four wins, great stats to go with those victories. But it was Jeff Tedford who told us earlier that he thinks that the real advantage will be the student section. He's talked about it this week, and right now he's over in front of that student section telling them that communication will be key for Oregon this afternoon, and he wants them to be loud. Try and disrupt that offense to give them the advantage. Maybe Cal, with the help of the student section, can pull off the big upset that will ripple across the country. Ron? All right, thanks, Lewis. Cal's won the last three games at home versus Oregon. Oregon last Oregon win back in 2001 more from Berkeley California with the number one team in the country the Bears not only face the number one team in the country but the number one rusher in the country in LaMichael James LaMichael James is explosive he's got the vision he's got the quickness he's got speed to go all the way speed strength size Great ability to get up to speed fast. Great balance. Great speed. Very selfless player. Stronger than you would imagine. Crowd of better than 60,000 expected to be on hand at Memorial Stadium in Berkeley, California as the Bears take on the number one team in the country, the Ducks of Oregon. Oregon won the toss. They will receive. They've only punted on their opening possession one time this year. Giorgio Tavecchio set to kick it away. Huff and Cliff Harris, two very dangerous return men, are back to receive. And this is something that obviously California is very concerned about when you have guys like Huff and Harris back there. And the left footed kicker hits a boomer. And it'll be Huff at about the three. He slips right up the middle. Makes his way up to about the 25-yard line. We take a look at the Oregon offense. It is going to be quick tonight, my friends. Number one in total offense. 29 of their 58 touchdown drives have been five plays or less. And Darren Thomas... The 6'3 sophomore out of Houston, Texas, who's gotten better every week, is the quarterback. Hey! 
Thomas looks left, goes to the secondary receiver, and that is overthrown incomplete. Let's take a look at the rest of the E Harmony starting lineups and on the line. The line of Oregon's only given up five sacks. Experience line as uh, those guys in the middle are seniors. Yeah, Jeff Mayo, the guy that really is the go to guy for this offense. And quickly, as we have talked about a lot this year, how quickly Oregon gets to the line and snaps the football. There's that belly play you were talking about, Glenn, to start things off. Over the left side, it's LaMichael James Kendricks. Comes up with the stop. Let's take a look at the Cal defense. Number one of the Pac-10 in pass D and total D. Defensive end Cameron Jordan. He'll play on Sundays. Coming off a career best game in tackles. And at linebacker, Glenn? The Michael Hendricks right there. Mike Muhammad, both guys. The sombrero is on this linebacking core today. And the secondary. They need to tackle well. Chris Conti. He's their bell cow back there on third down and short. And they're not going to get it. Trevor Guyton is the one who stuffed it in the middle. A well, blown assignment. Trevor Guyton comes unblocked, and that's what you should do if you're unblocked. Missed tackles will get to you, and so far, Cal worked on tackles all week. It comes to fruition on third down. And they will go for it on fourth down. They need about a yard, maybe two. They're almost 60% this year on fourth down. The snap. Thomas keeps it. Being strung out. He's got the first down over the 40 to the 42 yard line. Mark Anthony picked him up. Take a look. That's the zone read. No one at the mesh point. He sees the, the uh, end crash. Gets outside knowing he need, needs one. I'll tell you, impressive that Oregon felt so confident not only in their offense to get one, but in their defense to defend a short field on fourth down this early in the game. That's a fresh set of downs. First and ten from about the 42. Thomas's pass swings it off into the flat to Barner, and he is knocked out. Maybe got back to the original line of scrimmage. Mike Mohammed, a good job on coverage, getting out into the flat, stalking, and knowing that his sideline is one of his defenders. This Cal defense has only allowed three points in the first half in four home games as we look at Chip Kelly, the head coach of Oregon. Came in as offensive coordinator, and this is his second year as a head coach. Thomas with a play fake, has a man down the middle, overthrows the intended receiver, Jeff Mayo. Mayo had a step on Mark Anthony in the cornerback. Well, Cal comes in, they play cover one man. A nice little hold there by Mark Anthony. Just enough a grab to affect the pace of the run and get him out of his comfort zone. Third down and 10. Thomas has protection, dumps it to Mayo. He'll be short of the first down again, up to about the 49-yard line. This time, Mark Anthony was hanging on to the ankles. It makes your defense it's much more difficult to defend knowing that the offense is always going to go on fourth down. You're playing a team that takes four downs to get ten, not three. Fourth down and two. Second time they've gone for it on fourth down tonight. Thomas this time hands it off to James, and he is stopped. Guyton made the first hit. Mohammed cleaned it up. And Cal takes over an excellent field position. See the penetration right there. There's a color everywhere. LaMichael does not have the speed to get to the end when there's that much color in the hole. Take a look here. He wanted to take that one belly into the backside A or B gap. Got there and there's too much color. Good job by that linebacking for getting their gap fits against the run. Once again, this Cal defense plays much better at home than they do on the road. They were hoping that trend would continue tonight against, obviously, the best competition they've played at home this season. So Cal on their first possession, Manchin going deep, and that is way overthrown. 
They wanted to stretch the field early, and we saw that from Brock Manchin, the junior out of Dallas, Texas, making only his second start. One of the good parts about him is, though, Glenn, he's got the big arm, and we saw it there. Yeah, they're not afraid to use him down the field. One thing they feel they have an advantage with Manchin is that he has got the arm strength to stretch defenses and put the pressure on him down the field. And there's head coach Jeff Tedford, who has turned this program around. In the modern era, he is the all-time winningest coach. He's about to break every record here in just a couple more wins. On the ground, Vereen breaks to the outside. Inside the 30, inside the 20, and they're going to mark him out of bounds at the 18-yard line. Pick up of 31 on the play. Well, Vereen is tough to bring down, number one. Then he picks up a big block out here, number one. Wide receiver Marvin Jones right there. It's enough to get that corner back inside the ball near the hash marks. You get outside, Vereen gets another six, seven yards because of a good wide receiver block in the run game. And that is a big play, and that's something Cal has not done a whole lot of this year. They only have 34 plays of 20 or more yards. So after the excellent field position to begin this drive, now Cal knocking on the door. Here's Vereen again into the secondary, inside the 10, down to the eight-yard line. Let's take a look, look at the rest of the E-Harmony starting lineups. And the Cal line, it's been inconsistent. Short Summers, Gavin, they must protect Manchin's blind side, the skill people. Shane Vereen, you see it already, very strong. North-South runner puts pressure on defenses. You know, talking to the Cal coaches yesterday, said, listen, you haven't been successful on third down. In fact, they're 97th in the country, and they said, we're not getting good first down plays. They've done that tonight so far. Green again. Cuts inside. Got the first down. It'll be first and goal from the five-yard line after Boyette brings him down. Oregon defense in the top four of the Pac-10 in all major categories. The line has 17 and a half sacks, led by Kenny Rowe with six. He is very tough to block at linebackers. Second level, you look at Spencer Paysinger. He's going to be your whip backer. That means a lot of coverage for him against the pack. And in the secondary, keep an eye on Cliff Harris at quarterback. He is a ball hawk. First and goal for Cal. They marked it on the five-yard line. Stevens is the fullback. Green, left side, puts down the head, gets down to the two-yard line. Boyette already with four tackles from that safety position. That's not a good sign when your safety's got four tackles no, already. It's, no, it's not at all. Green, you see him. That's why we talk about north and south. He understood right away, tent stake the left leg, Turn your shoulder pads square to the line of scrimmage and get what you can. Second and goal. Ball is on the one-yard line. There's John Boyette out of Napa, California. Just about an hour north of here. Led the team in total tackles last year, but now his defense facing a stiff challenge. On second and one, they'll try Vereen again. Dances around. Touchdown, California. Rushes 49 yards against that Oregon defense. After Oregon failed on fourth down, Cal got great field position and marched down the field for the first score. Vereen was quite the workhorse. And Tavecchio with the extra point. And it is good. Well, Cal gets off to a great start. Big Shane Vereen coming north and south at you, breaking it out, catching a big block from his wide receiver. That gets him around the corner. I tell you, Shane Vereen puts it on his shoulders. Look at the leverage to get in and put him up. Cal, seven, Oregon, nothing. And that's the International House. If you're looking for some excellent dining on campus, we highly suggest that. Along with Glenn Parker, Lewis Johnson, I'm Ron Thulin. Shane Vereen scoring the touchdown. Oregon 37 and 6 in their last 43 home games. And they've got the early lead. This will be up. The coverage, good, but he breaks secondary. And he's up over the 35 to the 37 yard line. Fumble on the play, but obviously Oregon still has it. 
Lewis had a chance to talk to Shane Vereen earlier about being on the big stage. What do you think about, especially on a big stage like this, facing the number one team? Opportunity to have a big game? Yeah, definitely, definitely. I think all those backs that came before me uh, rose to the occasion in big games like this. And I think it's um, it's only proper if I do the same. Um, and, and that's my main goal, and that's one of the things that, that I really want to focus on and achieve is, is to rise to the occasion against a very good football team and perform uh, just as good as they did in the past and perform as well as I can perform. And so far, he has done just that. But no team has held Oregon under 40 points. Here's Thomas. Mike Mohammed coming up to make the stop. And there is Shane Vereen with the rest of the offense on the far side of the field getting some instructions. You know, you were asking the coaches yesterday about, we've already seen it, that mesh play, that belly play. You put it in the belly and how they have to recognize when he has it and when he doesn't. Yeah, and, and, and they really went over and over. Uh, Clancy Pendergrass talked about the count. There's a count in your head. If you get to a certain count and the ball's not gone, you've got to assume he's got the ball. This time Thomas is going to have to pitch it back. Barner, we've got a penalty flag. That was the Michael James. Check that. And Jeff Tedford saying we want to push him back. Well, when you run pitches, holding offense number 77, the back side penalty, replay second of down. your offensive line that gets in a bind. They've got to find a way to stop that flow. And what you saw in that play, they tend to grab. So when holding occurs on pitching, pitch plays, it's either right at the perimeter edge or it's on the back side of the football. Well, there's been the Achilles heel of Oregon. If there is one this year, that's penalties. They had 10 versus Washington last week. In the first two quarters, they had five penalties, three fumbles. It only came up with a field goal. Thomas's pass clock over the 40 up to the 41 yard line on the reception DJ Davis the senior out of Denver Colorado his 27th catch out of the year Thomas is so versatile and the coaches emphasizing yesterday to us how he is getting better game after game after game third down and five here comes the blitz pass is tipped at the line of scrimmage incomplete and again, Oregon facing a fourth down. This time, they're going to kick it away. Well, one of the things with Derek Thomas, sometimes the ball comes out a bit low. You saw that. If you can't get there, you're going to be a little tired as a defensive lineman. He drops back to pass. If you're not there, you don't have to guess. Get your hands up, pick a fence, tip that ball. And Jackson Rice is going to kick it away, standing on his 27-yard line. Just going to let it bounce out of bounds, but it'll still be decent field position. They'll mark it at the 27 yard line. Cal's football, they have the lead. John Hancock, the future is yours. Visit findtheanswers.com. You could never deliver this much power in a space this small until now. Introducing the Craftsman Compact Right Angle Impact Drive. Delivering powerful torque and greater control in the tightest spaces. More innovation. More great values. Craftsman, trust in your hands. Down by seven. Final play for the only thing that would make this any better is overtime. They'll need a miracle to win this football game. Very slot right, drops back. Hines takes the pass at the 30. With a seam! You have to be here. Field goal for the win. Oh! Let's take a look at our Toyota drive summary, and it was a good one if you're a Cal fan. 
And they did it on the running of Shane Vereen. Outstanding yeah. drive. Great blocking up front. Great blocking by his perimeter players. A good job of making one cut, then running to tackle, running to contact, trying to get those yards, and then leverage from his offensive line to get him in the end zone. Great job across the board by the Cal offense that first drive. Uh, this isn't too pretty up here, is it? <laughs> it's kind of tough to live here, I bet. Yeah, Golden Gate Bridge in the background. You know, the Cal coaches said they actually talked about slowing the game down, but they have a rhythm. And they said they want to stick to it. Let's see if they stick to the rhythm on, from that opening drive. Mansion. Pass is complete up to Marvin Jones, and he is stacked up. And what he's right talking the about there, Ron, is that you have a rhythm to your offense. You can't you can't try to break their rhythm by breaking your rhythm. What you can do is is drive the ball, try to get them kind of out of sorts, and just do what you do best. You can't change your identity for one game. And also to try to get Brock Mansion in some type of rhythm. They said he had an outstanding week of practice. He threw the ball very well. He's become almost a gym rat since he's become a starter. They're very impressed with his progress. Second down and nine. Mansion is dumped as he releases the football, but it is complete. Shane Vereen on the reception. Well, it's Capital One Hockey Night on Versus. Monday at 8, Matthew Shane of the Avalanche challenged David Backus and the Blues. Then Tuesday at 7, the Flyers face off against the Canadiens. Monday and Tuesday nights, hockey lives on Versus. Well, that catch was good enough for a first down, so again, the Bears on the move. Ball is at the 38-yard line. Well, great job, Vereen, understanding where the sticks were. And given what was taken or taking what was given, you know, the defender stayed off. He got his extra few yards and, and moves the sticks. Marvin Jones goes wide to the right, but they'll give it to Shane Vereen. Makes it up to the 40-yard line. Pick up of about two on the play. Shane Vereen, he is a workhorse. Last year in one game against Stanford, he carried the ball 42 times. But coach is telling us yesterday, Glenn, they've got to spell him. That's why. You know they're they're really watching how many carries he has. Yeah, you you've got to limit his exposure, and and you you've got a lot in the tank for one game. But what does that leave you in subsequent games? And they just don't want to take it all out of him for one game. Get him his 25, maybe 30 touches. Don't take his whole tank away from him. On second down and eight, the movement on Oregon's part. Pass complete up to the 45-yard line. That'll be a pickup of five on the play. Nice job by the tight end, Anthony Miller. Miller, a big target. Well, they've done a great job so far, Cal, of kind of staying ahead of the change. This is the first third down they're going to face so far today, and they've managed to get it to a third and two. So it tells you offensively they're doing exactly what they wanted to do mm -hmm. to stay on schedule. They need two for the first down. Green behind Mansion. Helen Allen goes in motion. We've got a penalty flag, and that's going to be movement. They'll back it up another five. Fire the snap. Ball start. Offense. Number 53. Five yard penalty. Still third down. Donovan Edwards. That's who it was called on the right tackle. Cal scored on their opening possession. They lead it 7 0 as we get a great shot from. High atop what they call Tight Wad Hill, which first came into existence in 1924. And the California Victory Cannon has already been shot already once tonight. So now, instead of third down and a couple, it's third down and seven. Shane Vereen now comes to the near side as a wide receiver. They empty the backfield. Three man pressure. Mansion's got the tie. Pass complete. It'll be short of the first down. Ross on the reception. Well, now Jeff Tedford gets to decide whether or not he wants to go for it on a fourth down. They've opted to punt wisely. Because you don't want to give Oregon the number one offense, that field position. Absolutely. As I said, the punter can be one of your best defensive players in a game of, of this type. Pin them down, make Oregon have to make the right decisions by going 80 yards or 90 yards down the field against you. Cliff Harris, who already has three returns for a touchdown, standing back at his 10-yard line. Ryan Anger, they wanted four seconds on the hang time, and I think they may have gotten it. Fair catch is called for. 
Outstanding play by Anger. We'll take a break with 454 left in the first. All right, I'll tell you, Stanford, obviously an outstanding football team, and they're, I'm sure, wondering what's going to happen with Oregon. Of course, Oregon's already won that head to head battle. Well, Stanford better take care of business oh, against yeah. Arizona State. There's three, and then Fontes Burfecht, the linebacker at Arizona State, leads a really good defensive front. Thomas keeps it, looks for a block on the outside. One missed tackle as he gets up to the 30 yard line. That'll be good for a first down. We're watching the time between plays because much has been written about how quickly they go. A lot of people feel it's about 20 to 23 seconds to set up the play. That's about 35% faster than other teams in the country. That was less than 16 seconds. Thomas's pass is low, and they're going to say it's incomplete. It hit the ground at the 33 yard line. Intended for Lavashier two a day. Now their offense will at times go faster, at times go slower. They'll dictate the tempo based on what they see from that defense. And as the Oregon players and Chip Kelly say, they just keep chopping wood because one thing he is so good at is his head coach and his assistants making adjustments after the first couple of possessions. Second down and 10 from the 30. Thomas looks left, locks on his receiver, pass away from Michael James. Let's take a look at our Pizza Hut favorite matchup. We're going to go a little offense defense here with Michael James and Mike Mohammed, the outstanding linebacker from Cal. Yeah, your, your middle backer against your running back. How well does he flow down the line? Does he use his fit well? Does he does he scrape off the butt of the tackle and get in the backfield? All those things they're going to use in this matchup to see if they can stop Michael James. We have an injury and it looks like it's Derek Hill, the senior out of is down the highway in Oakland, California. And that would be a big loss. They're not very deep on the defensive line. Hill and Guyton have switched off at that nose guard spot with Guyton even playing some defensive end. And he's going to sit up. Trainers taking a look at him. Oregon's first two possessions forced out on downs on the opening possession, punted on the second. And Hill will head to the sideline. And Darren Thomas so far has not been able to crank up this offense. He's got three rushes for 21 yards, but the Michael James only three rushes for 80 yards so far tonight. For eight yards, I should say. And there is Mike Mohammed. Third down and ten. Here comes the blitz. Thomas steps up in the pocket. And he's got a lot of room in front of him. He gets hit, and it should be just a shade close, short of the first down. One official has it marked well there. Now they're saying they gave it to him, and the Cal coaches are saying, hold on. Yeah, they might want to look at this because you can see he comes oh, yeah. down. Looks like he's just short of that line. Too late. And Michael James already has the football, and he is going to be dragged down for about a half a yard loss. Nice job by Mohammed and Kendricks again. I guess that's one of the good parts of running an offense so quickly you don't have a chance to review anything. Yeah, as a matter of fact, before the game, talking with uh, the officials a little bit, that, that's one thing they said. Reviews are going to be hard to do with Oregon. Thomas keeps it looking. Scampering toward the sideline, lets it go, and it's going to be incomplete. Pass intended for D.J. Davis, and again, the time between plays. It was 15.8 the first time we tried this. This will bring up another third down. Third down and 10. Already their fifth third down try tonight. Four wide receivers set. Thomas has James coming out of the backfield, and he's got him. But he will be five yards short of the first down. Darian Hagan, the senior out of Crenshaw High School in L.A. on the stop. Nice defensive effort again by this Cal D. You know, the, the M.O., when you look at here, is this defense does a good job of coming up and bracketing Michael James. One inside, one inside. They're not about to let him get any yards after, after contact. But you take a look at what Oregon's 
offense is doing. They need to get together and figure out what adjustments to make against this defense. Here's Jeremy Ross takes it at the nine. Does a nice job making his way up to the 17 yard line 47 on the kick 12 on the return. Here's Lewis Johnson. Well, Ron, as of right now, Jeff Tedford getting exactly what he wants on the field and also from this California fans. They have been loud every time the Oregon Ducks have been on offense trying to disrupt what they're doing now. I watched the uh, Ducks when they were on the sideline a few moments ago. Don't see any panic in them. They're all O-line and skilled players just kind of working through their problems. Down 7 nothing here. I'll tell you, these fans are great here. And the Duck fans in the hotel, they are some of the most passionate fans. And it's been a treat meeting him and talking to him the last couple of games. They go from the Wildcat formation and Vereen keeps it. Now before the game Jeff Tedford has a tradition he runs over to the student section and he wants to thank him for being there. And he says he does it because he really appreciates the Cal support by the student body and he just wants to make sure that they know that. That was a pickup of four on the Wildcat formation by Vereen. Again, just a new look. It's something near the toolbox. You put it out there, and you make Oregon now have to defend more looks against you. Now Manson will go from the shotgun. Vereen to his right. They empty the backfield. And they swing it to Vereen, and he can't put his hands on it. He is an outstanding receiver out of the backfield. In fact, he had a streak of 33 straight games with a reception. That was snap versus Oregon State. Well, credit, uh, you've got to credit the Sam Backer on that one. Yeah. Boseco Lacombo, he came up, got his hands up, forced that ball up high so that there was no reception. Now putting Cal behind the chains for the first time really all night. Well, it's third down and six. Only two wide receivers split right and left. Here comes a six-man rush. Manchin got the first down. Pass complete to Ross. Jeremy Ross with his second reception tonight. Max Pro. Keep everybody in. Only run two. It's a simple out to the sticks. Great job right there. You need to do this. Jeremy Ross understanding where the marker is. Running his route just past it. Getting the reception. And credit the throw by Manchin. Putting it right on. A tough target. We talked about his big arm, and I think he's, we saw it there. Ten seconds to snap it. Cal seems to be taking their time, and Manchin may have to burn the timeout. And I think they're going to as the clock goes to 2:02 left in the opening quarter. Timeout, California. Their first charge timeout of the half. This will be a so let's take a look at the Pac-10 standings. Oregon on top, of course, six and zero in conference play. Stanford right behind them at. At five and one. And then you've got Arizona four and two in conference play and the rest. And obviously Cal looking to get to that six win to go to a bowl again for the eighth consecutive year. Yeah, Stanford, of course, playing Arizona State right now. Arizona in a tough game tonight against USC. And no, don't forget, Arizona and Oregon have yet to play as well. So a lot of great matchups in the Pac-10 coming in the next few weeks. That's a great shot from our remote camera on top of Tightwad Hill. And the fans that go up there, they police themselves. One thing you can't do on Tightwad Hill, you cannot wear red. Anything to do with Stanford, you cannot have in the stadium. I would imagine that's one of the few rules on Tightwad Hill. Tightwad Hill actually mentioned in a Green Day song on an album, their Insomniac album, I Am So Hip. It scares me. Man, you are street, <laughs> Ron. Here's street. Yeah. Main street. Not first and ten. Round game's been successful, but not this time. The Oregon front line, which is outstanding, stand up to the challenge. The Oregon front line right there, Zach Clark, Brandon Bear, good job of hitting the front side gap, getting color in the hole. That makes it very tough on the running back because now instead of being able to tent stick a leg break one cut, he has to stop and search for a gap. This may be the most physical defense or most athletic defense, I should say, in the Pac-10. If you look at tape in Oregon, every time somebody's tackled, there's four or five jerseys around with Oregon written on it. You can see the rushing yard so far tonight. Ross in motion. Green. Nice little cut. He plants the foot. Gets up to about the 34-yard line. Pick up a five. 
Tuesday night at 12, Versus brings you an all-new sports talk show featuring two of the most talkative and talked about NFL stars, Chad Ojo-Cinco and Terrell Owens. The T. Ojo Show, you think you've seen it all, you ain't seen nothing yet. Tuesday night at 12, only on Versus. Well, the last third down they had, Glenn, they had third and six. Now they have third and five. And they went with a max protect that time with only two out in the pattern. Here they come back, two tight ends, one back. It looks like it's the same formation. Keenan Allen, top of your screen. They rush five. Manson gets tripped up. And he's going to lose a couple on the play. They said he was a mobile quarterback, but he just got tangled up there. That's why they run the drop back spread a little more than they run the zone read with Manchin. Got tripped up but couldn't keep his feet. Jeff, Ted, Jeff Tedford is a quarterback guru and he says you know it's not time to get technical with Brock Manchin as far as his technique. He says he's got too much swimming around in his head right now. Let's just try to keep it simple. Well that's going to end the first quarter and for the second consecutive week Oregon is shut out in quarter number one. Fourth time this year, Oregon, the number one team in the country, trails at the end of one, seven to nothing to Cal. Beautiful view. You can see Alcatraz there also. But we know how the other three games turned out. <laughs> not exactly a barometer of how they're going to do the rest of the game. You do not see panic on an Oregon no. sideline. And I at, at any point, they do a great job of adjusting. They do a great job of keeping up the tempo. And knowing they're coming after you. Well, Cliff they Harris has to do another fair catch, which is exactly what they wanted. 40 yards on the kick. Now the top rushing duos, QB running back combos. You can see obviously Nevada, Taylor Martinez, Roy Hellu Jr. of Nebraska, Robinson of Smith of Michigan, number three, Ford, Newton, and Dyer down there at Auburn. And there you see Thomas and James how they stack up with the top quarterback and running back combos in the country. Still pretty good though. Ball on the 30. Thomas looking for the deep out. He's got a receiver near side, and that pass is going to be incomplete. Intended for Josh Huff, the true freshman out of Houston, Texas, a dynamic young player. Josh Huff was wide open. They did a good job confusing secondary coverage there. He was open for most of the play. That ball was late getting to him and too high. He could have thrown that ball two, three seconds earlier and got a 25-yard gain out of it. It's second down and 10. But they can get chunks of yardage very quickly. Thomas hit as he pitches. Not much of a gain, maybe two yards for LaMichael James. Conti and Anthony making the hit. There you can see the last couple of possessions for the Ducks. But you see punts and once on downs. But that last play, what you do? He's going to hold that ball. He's going to option. I'm going to hit it. That's what Cal's defense wants to do. Get to this quarterback and make their presence known. Third down and eight. The crowd is loud. Here comes the blitz. Thomas hit. Penalty flag is thrown as the pass falls incomplete. We have a couple of bodies laying on the ground. But Thomas was crunched. Looked like Ernest Owusu is the one who really lowered the blue boom and we have another Cal player down. Holding offense number 54 that penalty is declined fourth down. Well Jordan Holmes tried to do everything he can but watch the shot that Darren Thomas takes and this is something they don't want to see happen. No at first he gets hit in the run game and now in the past he's standing tall. He's got to have maybe a little more awareness of what's happening in the pattern. Look what happens here. Running straight across. That's a pick. That right behind the umpire probably should have been called. That is illegal, but it's got to be seen. The umpire had stepped forward, didn't see it, and the back judges certainly didn't see it. But this it's a dangerous play. Took him right in the sternum. Now we have a player down. We're unable to see his number. 
Coach Kelly knows that they don't want to get Thomas hurt. Nate Costa obviously lost for the season last week. A true freshman backs up Thomas. We'll take a break. We are in the second quarter. Oregon, the number one team in the country, trailing Cal by seven. Jeremy Ross back at his 23 yard line awaiting the Jackson Rice kick. Ross averaging just a shade under 13 yards of return, and this is a nice kick by Rice. Ross backs up to the 20 where he calls the fair catch. The kick covered 48 yards, and Cal will take over. The injured player, by the way, on that last play was Mark Anthony, but he did get up and walk off the field. There he is right now. Let's check in with Lewis Johnson. Yeah, Ron Anthony, I believe, is trying to figure out where he is. As you see, the trainers give him some diagnostic testing. He had to be helped off the field. And again, they're now doing the light in the eyes and trying to figure out what happened. And I think he's trying to figure out the same thing. I bet he is because Lavagier two and a just picked him, cold cocked him. We think it should have been a penalty. Because Anthony never saw it coming, and Tuane seems a little, a little on the groggy side. Also, let's listen to the call. Offside, defense, five-yard penalty, still first down. That's their second penalty. Let's go back to that last play where we thought it might have been a pick. Yeah, watch right here. He's going to be in coverage, covering this way. He's not looking at at the defender that comes to lay the pick on him. He's completely helpless. The, the offensive yeah. player, Lavashe Tune, puts his shoulder down, takes him out. Now, Lavashe Tune is looking like he might be injured as well. But that was a pick. It was Whether it was designed or not, it was an illegal shot. Straight up the middle. First down again for Cal. Nice job running the football again by Shane Vereen. He is closing in at about a 70 yards already here in the ballgame. Well, one way to an attack a defense that moves well is you either run straight at him with power or you use misdirection to get him out of position. And right now, Cal is going straight at this Oregon defense. Right now, the battle is being won by that Cal offensive line, and Vereen's going to get a rest. As we told you, they try to spell him. Ten rushes, 70 yards for Vereen tonight. Manchin. Not a good pass. He locked on his intended receiver, Keenan Allen, the true freshman. Never took his eyes off it, but still was not able to complete the pass. Well, there was a little pressure once the, the running back got into protection. The backer in man coverage came up, put a little pressure. Not a lot, but the mentality for Cal has been with Manchin, protect at all costs. We must protect him. A lot of Max Pro. So he's got to make those long throws to single wide receivers. He's got to do it for this Cal offense to succeed. Now second and ten, Cal needs to cut this in half to get ahead of the chains. Green back into the ball game. Manchin gets hit as he throws pass off the hands of the intended receiver, Anthony Miller. Let's check in with Kevin Frazier for an update on the SEC. Foster's game break and Steve Spurrier back in the swamp, this time trying to lead South Carolina to the SEC East title. Marcus Lattimore, the touchdown, South Carolina up 9-7 early. Oh, the old ball coach trying to pull one out. Right now, Cal facing third down and 10. Ball is on the 35. Well, even with only three in the pattern, Mantle was able to put the ball on the hands of his receiver there. Easily enough yardage for a first down if it had been caught. So they'll max protect this time, most likely. Miller's got to come up with that football. Manchin now sees the run. We have penalty flags all over the place, and he throws it into the Oregon bench. And it'll probably be the proverbial holding call. Actually, there were a bunch of them. Yes, it will be holding. Holding offense, number 53. Penalty is declined, fourth down. Donovan Edwards is number 53. Jack Wang, our official tonight, our referee tonight. Cal's margin of error is not great. You've got to make things like catch those kind of passes that we saw the tight end Anthony Miller miss. You can't have the holding penalty. No, you're absolutely right. And, and you can only count on your defense and your good corner and your hang time and all those things so much. You've got to do some things to keep yourself alive. 
Ryan Anger, Ray Guy, semifinalist, set to kick it away from the 20. And he tries to angle it to the right, and Harris is not going to be able to return this one either. So he has not been able to run any. Kick of 39, nothing on the return. All right, Kevin, we'll look forward to that. We've got a dandy going on in Berkeley right now. Cal leading the number one team in the country. And the uh, Oregon coach is telling us the players get antsy when things slow down and there's no tempo. There is no tempo for them in this game so far. Yeah, they haven't gotten into any rhythm whatsoever. And, and like you said, the coaches in practice, whether it's the game, they said the, coach, the players get a little uncomfortable. Even if they're way ahead trying to slow them down. Very uncomfortable for this team to get out of their normal up-tempo routine. Thomas pitches it back. That's their staple. One of the things Cal wanted to do was correct, protect the perimeter. Don't let Michael James get to the outside. So far, he's been not able to do it. But this Oregon offense is a kind of offense. They'll run the same play three or four times, and then boom, you can beat. Well, they keep that pressure on you constantly, and that, that takes its toll mentally on you as a team. On third down, and they will be close to the first down. Ball popped out. And where they're marking it right now is just a shade over the 35-yard line. They needed to get to the 36. Now he's going to take a shot from behind. And I think this is Cameron Jordan that knocks that ball out right there. That ball stays right on that line. Here's another look at it. Good job by Cameron Jordan. Yeah. In, knocking the ball loose. Too bad for Cal they don't get it. But there you said it. They came back with the identical play two times in a row. Right back at you. Fourth down, this is the third time they've gone for it on fourth down. They've been successful once. They need less than a yard. And a whistle. And we've got a timeout. Time Oregon, their first part timeout of the half. So Oregon calls their first timeout as Coach Kelly goes and talks to the official. And Thomas wants to talk to the coaches. Well, college football on Versus continues November 27th. It's a doubleheader featuring two top 10 teams. First and four, Andy Dalton, the number three TCU raid New Mexico. Then at 7.30, Jim Harbaugh's boys, led by Andrew Locke, protect their turf against Oregon State only on Versus. And we will be at Palo Alto. And TCU today looked like they had the game in hand. And obviously, Kelly Stoffer, Ted Robinson calling that ball game. And then all of a sudden they made it close, but this is the guy that really makes this team. You know, the thing about Andy Dalton, if if maybe the most highly sought after quarterback or talked about quarterback is Andrew Luck, and maybe the most talked about quarterback might be Cam Newton, well, this is the guy that's maybe under the radar and the most efficient of them all is Andy Dalton. He only doesn't win games. He's won 38 games, yeah, I believe, in, all in his does. career. Pretty impressive. Well, Mark Anthony, the quarterback, is out of the game for that Cal defense. Steve Williams, a redshirt freshman out of Dallas, is in. Let's see if they pick on him. James. He's going to be close to the first down, and he will have it by about a foot. Trevor Guyton making the stop from that nose guard spot. Well, a good job of his defense of getting into the gaps. Unfortunately, they don't close down the backside. That was Guyton. He stayed too long on that quarterback zone fake and didn't close distance on the backside. Owusu had a shot at him, couldn't come up with it. On first and ten, five-man rush, Thomas backpedaling. Dumps it off, pass complete, first down, Oregon Ducks to D.J. Davis. There's the first time we've seen how efficient or how strong Darren Thomas can be with his arm. This is a flip of the wrist to an open receiver on a full run. That shows his arm strength. And he picked up 15 on the play, his second catch of the night. This is the Oregon offense we thought we'd see. Just boom, boom, boom. Straight ahead. Up to the or down to the 45 yard line pick up a three on the play again is LaMichael James Michael Kendricks five tackles already for that Cal defense see the minute Oregon got that first down they've come up and they're snapping the ball much faster again they're trying to get it on the run again straight ahead to James DeAndre Coleman the redshirt freshman from Seattle Washington on the stop and again the tie between plays. The first was 15.8, the second much quicker. Once again, they vary it. We've got 
a player down and the Bluebirds may be the Oregon fans. They feel that a lot of teams are well, I hate to say it but faking injuries. So well just slow, stop the clock and slow things down. Yeah, you know, It's called scuba in the NFL guys got to go. You got to get some air right. So you have a guy who you know it, it comes down with a cramp. Gets a bit of a cramp, goes down, he gets off, he gets a glass of water, and a couple <laughs> plays later he's ready to go. The cramp might might not be fake. It could very well be real. I, I wouldn't I don't want to impugn anybody's honor out there. Well one of the things But it that, certainly happens. Yeah, but it, you're absolutely right. It does happen. We're not saying that that obviously Cal's doing it, but one of the things that they did that Cal did in practice, just trying to get ready for this Oregon offense, although this is the second week in a row that they've had this fast break offense but one of the things Jeff Tedford did is brought a scout team that he said was the most prepared thing he's ever seen working on Oregon's offense. And Aaron Tapodi is going to be helped off the field with a little limp. Down and five. Thomas looks left, throws left, first down again. Oregon down to the 35 yard line. DJ Davis, he's been the main guy so far tonight for Thomas. Now, Oregon gets that first. They come up, they're going to snap this ball. They want to get rolling after the first down. First and 10 Oregon at the 35 yard line trailing 7 nothing. Thomas he's dangerous when he scrambles but he's not going to get the opportunity taken down by Mike Mohammed the senior out of Brawley California and sideline to sideline he is outstanding. Now this is a good sack for him look at him he comes in he reads man coverage running back is blocking he puts his nose in there and goes for the sack loss of five Mohammed said this is our BCS game. He is the team leader both scholastically and on the football field. Second down and 15. Thomas keeps it in trouble again. Fumble. Ball is loose and Oregon I think has got it back. But it'll be all the way back to the 48 yard line. And Thomas again taking a couple of hits and those are unnecessary hits. Yeah you know you take a look he's going to scramble he goes north and south takes that shot right in the face that ball pops out good job by the defense put their nose right in on the ball. I don't think it's any secret you were talking about it yesterday Glenn you got to smack it in the mouth a couple of times if you're that Cal defense. That's right. You know, a quarterback who's going to carry the ball can't be effective if he's afraid of getting hit. Third down and 23. James. Techno is Barner. But he will be well short of the first down to the 42 yard line. And again, the Cal defense doing a nice job of stopping the potent Oregon offense. And they're going to kick it away. Jackson Rice set to kick it. Dad Mike, of course, played for the NFL, the New York Jets. Standing back at his 44 yard line. Jeremy Ross awaits the kick, and this is a good one. Gets it about the 12 yard line. They'll down it at the three. Let's go back to the Cal injury. Well, what you got to do is get guys out of their rhythm. Now you take a look here. There's there he is right there to Pokey. Now you can see he's he's walking back. Now he looks to that sideline. Watch him. Oh 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 hey I'm cramping here and down he goes. I wonder. Wonder if that was a you know I wonder if that cramp was brought on by the sight of, of something or was it a just a massive loss of fluid within a few seconds? Massive loss of fluid in a few seconds. We'll go with that one. Yeah, he's got the ball on the three yard line. Dave Vereen takes quite a hit. Nice defensive effort by Bryson Littlejohn from that middle linebacker spot. I'll tell you, that's the first hit Vereen's take that was has taken that's been ferocious. 
No gain on the play. Ball still sits at the three. One thing when you look at a game like this, you kind of forget is a team that's number one in the country that has that, that plays the way Oregon does has a lot of pride. Oh yeah. And they want to bring it to you. Let me tell you, this defense is solid of Oregon. The offense gets the punt. Marie puts his head down, is able to muscle up to about the six, maybe the seven yard line. So he picks up about four on the play. And the trick here, Cal cannot be complacent. Cal can't give the ball back to Oregon oh, yeah. with enough time to, to tie this game or even get ahead. They really need to see if they can just kind of eat some clock for the rest of the half here and keep Oregon on kind of behind the eight ball for the rest of the half. Oregon averaging about three yards a play. They've got 98 yards. Cal has 97 yards. Also averaging just over three yards a play. Third down and six. Three step drop, Manson's pass off the fingertips of Marvin Jones. Talmadge Jackson on the coverage. Here's Lewis Johnson. Well, Ron, take a look at the Oregon Duck mascot who has done literally thousands of push ups throughout the season based on the points scored by the Oregon offense. So far today, bored, walking around, taking photos, signing autographs, and right now, the Duck is lost. <laughs> yeah, well, all he's got to do is call the Wisconsin Badger today. He had to do 83 push ups. Now fourth down and six to go from the seventh. So again, Cal's going to have to kick it away. No rush. And this is a beautiful kick by Ryan Anger from the 35 yard line. Look out. Say goodbye to Cliff Harris. Touchdown, Oregon. His fourth kick return for a touchdown this year. In your excitement to get game time, you can outkick your coverage. It's a term used all the time in football. That's exactly what happened. You know, when we were talking to the coaches, as they look at the old swinging gate, they went for a two-point conversion on this last week, and they're going to try it again. And they get it. Second week in a row, they get the two-point conversion. Deion Jordan is the one who gets it. They come out with that almost like a swinging gate thing. Last week, it was Beard the kicker that took it in. So Oregon has got... Cliff Harris has a 76, 61, and a couple of 64-yard punt returns for touchdowns. That one was 64. The two-point conversion has given the number one team in the country an 8-7 lead. Four punt returns for TDs. Three was already an Oregon record for Betterson. Beard set to kick it away. He's got a solid leg. 11 touchbacks already. And he's kicking with the win. And this is a sidewinder about two yards deep. Jeremy Ross wants to bring it out and he hits to the sideline looking for the wall. A little hurdle as he goes over the 25. Let's go back to the last touchdown. Now, no, I want you to notice when he catches the ball, no one near him. So the coverage is late. Then right there, Michael Honda gets caught inside. On the outside, there's no one. So if you've lost, first off, you've outkicked your coverage. Second, you've lost contain. When that happens, a guy like Harris is gone. You don't have yeah. a chance. And you know, we were talking about the job that Brian Anger had done in the previous punts. No returns, just hanging it up there. But Harris just remained patient. He takes that one to the house. Ball on the 26-yard line, 6.27 left to play in the opening half. Manchin again overthrown his intended receiver, Jared Sparks. 
He just doesn't seem like he can get in the rhythm throwing the football so far tonight. No, he's looked right there. He stayed on his receiver. He had Keenan Allen running wide open on the other side of the field. If he would come off that first read, maybe come back, swing to the side and find that open guy, maybe that is one or two reads down the progression and get himself into more of a rhythm. Maybe they need to run some screens, mm -hmm. maybe some bubbles, something to get him into a throwing rhythm. He's only 5 of 12 throwing the football tonight. And they face second and ten. Green looks to the 30-yard line, and he gets to the 30-yard line. Pick up a four on the play. Valmich Jackson, the third on the stop. I, I, I'm impressed, though, to go back for a moment with Chip Kelly. Going for it on fourth down several yep. times. Going for two. Not giving up. Not 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 being the guy that the average Joe when it comes to my number one team. Taking some chances and having a lot of confidence in his team. Well, he got the two-point conversion last week. He got another one this week. Now Shane Vereen goes in the slot on third down and six from the 30. Manchin looks right. Throws, and that pass is incomplete. Here comes the penalty flag. Intended for the true freshman, Keenan Allen. The safety, Eddie Pleasant, a pretty hard hitter, came up there, and that's who they're going to grab on this. Pass interference, defense, number 55. Ball be placed at the spot of the foul, automatic first down. Take it back, they went with the middle linebacker, yeah. Casey Matthews. Oh, take let's a look, look at here. it. You take a look right to the right of your screen. Matthews comes out, now he'll come back under with the pad, and you see him, he's got a hand. Does he have a hand on him or not? Tough to tell from that angle, but that back judge, the right. far back guy, is the guy with the view on it. He's the one that called it. He threw the flag pretty quickly, too. What's up with all the hair in college football? I love it. Allen comes back in motion. And they give it to Vereen. Takes a hit right at the line of scrimmage. Nice job. Eddie Pleasant coming up from that rover spot. He's a guy that was moved from the linebacker position to that rover spot in spring. And he's the second fastest DB, they tell us. Well, when you when you have a rover position like that, it tells you a lot that he was a linebacker that moved to it. He's still playing like a linebacker. He is filling lanes. He's coming up. He's scraping a match right off the end of the gap. His fits are good. He plays that rover position very well and much like a linebacker. No gain on the play. Closing in on five minutes to play in the opening half. Marine again losing yardage and losing the football. Still loose on the ground, but he gets it back. Well, now you're getting into that position we just talked about. Cal sitting here. They're down one. You see the replay here. Vereen with the ball. Gets it away from his body a bit here. Gets poked out. If you can't make the tackle, you go for the ball. Vereen comes back up with it. But here's Cal now sitting here at a third. Very long. Four and a half minutes to go. They've got to find a way to extend this drive a little bit and keep the ball out of the hands of Oregon. Who could go in now and keep that tempo right back on him again? Loss of six on the play, so it's third and 16. Oregon showing blitz, and here they come on Manson. His pass incomplete, no penalty flag this time. Michael Calvin, that was the intended receiver, Anthony Gilden doing a nice job on the coverage. You know, we talked about the offense and defensive line. That series, the Oregon defensive line. Absolutely dominated, especially Zach Clark and Brandon Bear. And there is Cliff Harris standing back at his 25-yard line. You can see that the Oregon record, 64 yards for the touchdown on the last return. And this time they angle it to the far side of the field and that's what they need to do. Well, on October 30th, Cal lost their starting quarterback, Kevin Riley, and he's with Lewis Johnson right now. All right, Ron, thanks a lot. Well, Kevin, uh, it was a gruesome injury. How are you dealing with the disappointment of, of what happened there? Um, you know, just, I've had a ton of support from family and then friends and uh, just the whole university as a whole. And uh, I got to look forward to getting my degree at Cal and just rehabbing and give football another chance at the next level. So you step out, Brock Manson steps in. What have you seen from him so far in this first half? Well, I think everybody here knows he's a talent. You know, he's a big, has a cannon. Uh, right now, I just think he's got to settle down a little bit. You know, it's tough with your second start being against the number one team. Just calm down, just let him make throws. So. 
Jeff Mail with the reception. That was an outstanding job, though, by Darren Thomas, looking one way, waiting for that little, almost a bubble screen to set up. Yeah, and, and even a better job of the center, right guard, right tackle, getting out in front of us. Look at the big bodies. Look at Kaiser and Holmes and Asper running downfield, throwing flesh against those DBs and letting Nail letting make a cut. And you go back to your running game with LaMichael James. We talked about the balance at the top of the show that they come at you running the football and throwing the football. The decision maker, though, is number one, Darren Thomas. Second down and short. Puts it in the belly of James. He'll be short of the first down. Gets inside the 35-yard line down to the 34-yard line. And you see the clock again as Oregon has kicked it into another gear. Thomas keeps it. He's got the first down by about a half a yard. Chris Conti was holding out of the ankles. And that's a first down with 259 to play in the half. Oregon now with 129 yards total offense in the ball game. Ball on the 32 yard line. Penalty flag is thrown. Thomas pass complete inside the 30. Down to the 28-yard line to Josh Huff. Well, that flag thrown in the offsides yeah. and or illegal formation area. We'll see what they give us here. Illegal motion. Offense, number 42. Five-yard penalty. Replay first down. Fourth penalty by Coach Kelly's troops. But we talked about the mesh at the top of the game. Here's that last play. Yeah, that's the mesh. Now you ride, you ride, you ride, you ride. Now he pops it out of there. Once he sees the defensive end commit, he takes it. You see how long that took. Coach Pendergast talked about there's got to be a count in your head of when it's been. It's taken too long. He's keeping the ball. First down and 15. Thomas tries to set up that little screen again on the outside. It's caught pickup of about two on the play. Jeff Mayo with his second reception. 31 consecutive games, he has caught a pass. And Mayo comes up looking a little gimpy with his right arm here. May, uh, he, it looks like he took a shot on it. He was holding it, and he's coming out of the game right now. He just tapped his helmet. Well, he came out of last week's game against oh, Washington. Now he's coming to the near side, but it looked like he had a stinger in last week's contest. Yeah, he was tapping his helmet. It looked like he wanted out of there. Maybe he was, he's it. wide open here. And he's down in the middle of the field, incomplete, waiting for the flag, and we're not going to get it. Intended for Mayo. They take a look at Mayo in the slot, gets off press coverage, gets vertical, so he gains some real estate right away. Gets bumped maybe as the ball is there. I think Josh Hill turned around, and if he wouldn't have turned around, it probably would have been a penalty. Third down and 13, ball on the 36-yard line. But again, if Darren Thomas gets that ball out of his hand on rhythm, that's a touchdown. Absolutely. It took, took just a bit too long to get that ball out. Mail far to the right. Thomas looking left, throws the deep out, caught by Josh Huff. And he has stood up at the 28-yard line. That'll be about four yards short of the first down. You still, you know, Darren Thomas has an arm. He's got a lot of strength. He's able to complete passes down the field. For him, it's simply a matter of rhythm. He probably is so used to running at a certain tempo. You get him out of that a little bit, and suddenly he's not the stand, the stand up backdrop passer that you'd like to see out of him. For the fourth time tonight, Oregon will go for it. There are two or three on fourth down. They need three, and we're going to have a timeout call. And I think Cal timeout, called this one. California, their second charge timeout. This will be a 30 second timeout. Now let's take a look at our K Jewelers go to guy. And it's a guy that a couple of years ago people were calling him a possession receiver. But the more you watched him the last couple of years, Jeff Mail has become more than that. 
you know he's got uh, great hands he's a very physical receiver and we were talking to the coaches about him and they said this guy's running routes better he knows how to get open now he's become a very very good receiver well he's doing the little things you know it's a wide receiver it's easy I think sometimes to look at wide receivers and say okay you run a route off the tree it's all another to understand when you run the route how to separate yourself how to how to have your cut and your hips perfectly so that you're that you're gaining enough real estate here and there. That's the little things he's doing that a young wide receiver doesn't do. Three catches tonight. He goes wide to the right. Thomas completes it down to the 21 yard line. That's good enough for a first down. Well, Michael James on the reception. Thomas finds to Michael James who comes out of the backfield. The offensive line all cut that gets hands down. That way you can get the ball in the hands of playmakers fast. 57 seconds left in the half. Pass is tipped. They were looking for James again coming out of the backfield. The same play again. This time on their cuts, they don't get the hands down. Ball gets blood tipped. And you, you said it earlier, they'll run the play and come right back at you with the same play. They've done it twice so far tonight. And we've got another hurt player. This time it looks like it's Kendrick Payne, number 96. They went way down the depth chart. To find him. Well, we've got two guys, both have been hurt, that aren't on the depth chart. Well, he's getting himself, you see, a cramp again. It's, it, it, you know, the thing about Cal, there's a lot of moisture around here, but I think guys, they don't drink enough water because they, they don't get thirsty. I'm doing my best here, Rob. <laughs> Let's take a look. <laughs> okay, I'll buy it. Now he gets a little cut, he comes up, he was right in the middle of the screen there. That ball gets tipped. He looks fine there, but he did take a shot on his leg on that cut. Maybe that's what they're they were taking a look at. A helmet to a knee. Well, Cal only has one timeout left. Oregon has two. And again, the Oregon fans are booing because they're seeing this more and more. I've got this feeling. Well, I played for the Buffalo Bills, and we ran the no huddle the entire time with Jim Kelly. And every team in the NFL eventually went to this. Right. They called it scuba, and you just got used to it. Now he's been taken off the field. Second down and 10 from the 21 yard line. Thomas keeps it. Looks to the sideline. Doesn't get it. Gets down to the 20 yard line. Chris Conte, the senior out of Loyola High School in Los Angeles, on the stop. Well, Darren Thomas, he's hustling to get to that sideline and stop that clock. But now they're, uh, they're actually allowing the clock to simply run on this third down. They gave him two on that, so it's third down and eight from the 19. Look out. And for the second time tonight, Thomas takes his shot. Trevor Guyton and Cameron Jordan laid the wood on him. Well, you see, he's under pressure. He'll throw this ball. He'll actually hit his offensive lineman in the back. Now, in the NFL, that's illegal touching. That would be an illegal touching penalty. In college, I don't believe that's the case. So, Oregon gets a little luck there. And facing fourth down and eight with 14 seconds left in the half. They'll kick a 37-yard field goal. Rob Beard lines it up. He's two for two from this distance this season. Good snap, good hold. And the kick is no good. It slid to the left. Well, the snap is good. The hold is good. He just hooks this just a bit. He doesn't appear to slip. He just he just hooks it. It's the difference between yeah. being in the fairway and being in the rough. There you go. Beard doesn't miss too often. He is eight of nine on the year coming into that, so that's only his second miss of the season. 
So Cal now you would think they just take a knee with 10 seconds left and try to run this thing out. Well considering they're getting the ball coming out at half. That's exactly what they should do. The Oregon offense averaged 567 yards a game. They have 149 yards in the first half. Cal has 99 yards in the first half. Here's Lewis Johnson with Chip Kelly. Thank you, Ron. Coach, your prolific offense has struggled here in the first half, only eight points. What's happening? That's why we play 60 minutes. But why are you? Why, why the slow start? This is not typical for Oregon football. We don't care about slow starts. We don't get any awards for winning at halftime. We'll be here at the end of the game, though. All right, what about LaMichael James? Only 34 yards rushing. Any concern about that? Nope. Could Oregon play a whole game? We don't talk about things at halftime. We'll make some adjustments, and then we're going. What, what about the adjustments? What might you make? i got to get in the locker room and figure that one out. All right, Coach, you're on your way. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Ron. All right. And he does make adjustments, and he does it so well. He is 14-0 as head coach when leading at halftime. Shane Vereen gave Cal the early lead. And then the punt returned by Harris gave Oregon the lead. And that's where we are now. Oregon leading 8-7. Here's Kevin Frazier. Welcome back to College Football and Versus as we take a look at our Windows 7 first half stats. And I think the one thing that stands out, only 149 yards for Oregon. But at the top of the show, you talked about what Cal needed to do to beat him. One of them was hit the quarterback. Yeah, you got to hit the quarterback. You got to get him uncomfortable. You got to have your linebacker play and fit in the run game. And they've done that very well. They're stopping the run. They're hitting the quarterback. They're doing what it takes to win this game right now. Well, once again, Cal's going to get the football to begin the second half. Jeremy Ross, Keenan Allen back to receive it. And this will be Ross from about the three yard line. Up over the 20, and he is going to be placed down. Well, Cal was able to get to the quarterback in that first 30 minutes of play, Glenn. Well, right here you're seeing Thomas drop back, and he's getting hit. And a lot of times they put pressure on him in the run game and in the pass game. They hit him, they knocked the ball out, they took away his scrambling ability they took away his ability to stand in the pocket and then they also took away his ability to run and when he pitches the ball even if he got rid of the ball he was taking a shot and that's the important thing attack the mesh point with him so that he never gets comfortable with the ball in his hands and they also had two sacks in that opening half Cal had problems offensively in that second quarter no passing yards only 12 rushing yards Manchin's pass is high for the intended receiver Keenan Allen and we talked about the two great running backs we have here tonight. Shane Vereen obviously on the right and Michael James on the left. And 34 yards to 72 yards. Most of those yards for Vereen came on that opening drive when he had 49 yards. But it's what it shows you. It's a product of what Cal wants to do and that's keep the possession time even. Try to eat a little clock. Keep the tempo on your side. Those are the things they're doing. And so that those numbers are a product of that. But who are we kidding? Cal's got to kick it up offensively if they want to be in this football game. Vereen loses the football. Still bouncing around. Bodies diving for it. Oregon says they have it. The officials haven't made a motion yet. And there is violence going on at the bottom of that pile. And I think Oregon may have this when they finally loosen up the scrum. And they do. Only the fifth fumble loss this season for Cal. Kenny Rose, the one who came up with it. Well, this is the second fumble of the night for Vereen. You see the hand. The hand gets on the tip of the ball, knocks it out. Vereen has another chance at it. And then it's at the scrum. And that ball is down there, and everybody's diving. Well, Cal had a chance to come up with it, and they failed. Now what you're doing is you're putting your back against the wall, and we've seen so many teams this year, not so many, but a number of teams, play close to Oregon. They have something bad happen, and then the oil light comes on. Thomas looking. Has a man now. 10-5. Touchdown, Oregon. What Oregon, 49 yards. what Oregon does is put pressure on you. 
right after the turnover, what do they come back to? They come to the over route with Mayo running away from a safety. There's no way that Josh Hill one-on-one -on -one, could keep the real estate between him and Mayo on that crossing route. Great job by Darren Thomas getting rid of the ball in a timely fashion. Getting to the touchdown. Here we see the swinging gate again. Mayo seven straight games with a touchdown reception that ties Steve Bunker's record back in 1965. He now has 23 for his career. One off the school record. And the extra point is good. Oregon puts pressure on you. And they have a very good defense that takes a lot of pride. They come right out. They force the fumble from Vereen. Now they're going to get that ball back. And Darren Thomas finds Jeff Mayo. And they go up 15-7. Coming out strong in the second half. Darren Thomas's 23rd touchdown pass of the year. He came into the game tied for second in the Pac-10. And Jeff Mayo, we talked about his numbers. That's 11 touchdown receptions this year for Mayo. And, of course, the fumble by Shane Vereen is the one that started everything. Well, the trick is this. If you're Cal, you know, it couldn't have started worse, and that's easy to say. But you come out with the possession, and you're hoping at the minimum a field goal to go ahead or a good long drive to establish something, you didn't have that possession. Right. One fumble and you're already down now. Well, now it's 31 of 60 touchdowns by Oregon have been five plays or less. And both of theirs tonight have been one play. The punt return in that one. Ross and Allen. And this will be Jeremy Ross. Looks for something to the right side. Tries to cut back. It's up to the 22-yard line, and he is thrown down. Let's go down to Lewis. Well, Ron, the Oregon Duck mascot was pretty boring in the first quarter. Only eight push-ups, but here was what we saw. Look at that one-handed push-up, and look, this thing has done over 2,400 push-ups throughout the season. And based on our technology and our producer, here's the artist rendition of Super Duck. Look at the abs, <laughs> the muscles. That's what happens when you've done over 2,400 push-ups throughout the season. Not many tonight, but it's been a big season. He still looks like he's got a barley belly, though, and, you know, he doesn't have to go down that far on the push-up. Now let's see if Cal can get something going. And boy, I tell you what, Manson just took a hit as he let go of the football intended for Keenan Allen. And the problems continue for Brock Manson. We thought that he'd have a little more success throwing the football tonight, but he's 5 of 14 for only 31 yards. Well, even the problem is this. They're trying some of the shorter routes to help him out, but every short route has someone's hands up. Mm -hmm. Someone has gotten in the way of that route, and it's causing him to, the, the ball to sail on him. And down the field, while he has the strength of arm, he's flying the ball too hard if there's no touch on it. E.C. Sofelli has checked into the backfield now for Cal. Manson's pass intended for a well-covered Sofelli. Spencer Pacinger, the senior out of Long Beach, California, the outstanding linebacker, was on the coverage, but there was no hope for that one. Pacinger was all over him. And it was, a, it was no gain anyways. It would have been for no gain. So with pressure in his face, he took his outlet, and his outlet wasn't there. Still no yards passing for Manson since the first quarter. Now he faces third down and ten. And in that first half, they were only one of six. You're going to have to take, you're going to have to open up some. You've got to get away from yeah. Max Protect. Right here, you've got to get people in the pattern. Let him start throwing the ball. Here comes the blitz. Manchin steps up, hit as he throws, and it's going to be incomplete. And Brock Manchin went down again. He is being blown up in the backfield. Well, here he is, and he does stand tall. A lot of pressure. Gets rid of that ball. A little extra shove by Pace here. A little bit something, but it's, it's football. He got pads on. There you go. Cliff Harris already a punt return for a touchdown, standing back at his 34-yard line. Brian Anger has done a pretty good job, except for out kicking his coverage on the Harris punt return for the score. No rush. Anger a nice high wobbling kick. Harris from the 35. Again, he breaks through the first wave. But this time he will go down at the 47 yard line. 44 yards on the kick, 15 on the return. And 
If you followed Oregon football, you know that they make fashion statements every year, but this is what they've gone through this year. The different jerseys. Now, these are some of the base jerseys in, in uniform. You can mix and match with, with everything. Well, yeah, they, they've done a nice job of combining neutral tones with a little more flash, and so they've, they've come up with some, some different combinations that look good on uh, fields throughout the Pac-10. And that last one's the only one that hasn't been debuted so far this year. Great running game down to the 44 yard line is LaMichael James. In that first half, he was not what we thought he would be. He only had 35 yards on 12 carries. But he got seven on that one. Second down and three. Thomas keeps it. Near side. He's got the first down as he makes his way close to the 35 yard line. Well, a good job by the Michael James of getting the block that gets the perimeter. When you when he when you're not running the zone read, which means going opposite of your running back here, it's zone read, it's, it's it's read front. So he fakes the fakes the handoff, the back becomes the lead back, and it's a really nicely designed play. Good adjustment at half to get to the perimeter with your quarterback. 16 yards on two plays on this drive. James has got it, cuts back against the grain. He gets to the 34-yard line. Mike Mohammed, six stops on the night. We see the time between plays again. But as Chip Kelly told Lewis Johnson at halftime, we'll make adjustments, and we're seeing some of those adjustments already. Thomas pulls it out of James's belly, puts his head down, gets close to the 30. I think they'll mark him out at about the 31-yard line. Well, Oregon really pushing the pace here. Now we're sitting at third down. This is where there have been some injuries for Cal in, in, the, in the first half. Third down and six. Cal's got seven guys in the box. Here comes the blitz. Thomas lets it fly. Pass is incomplete. We have a penalty flag on the far side of the field. It was intended for Josh Huff. It may be offsides against Oregon because Michael Kendricks was getting very close, or for Cal, very close to the line of scrimmage. Illegal formation. Oh. Offense. Five yard penalty. Correction. Illegal formation on the offense. That penalty is declined. It'll be fourth down. All righty then. So fourth down for Chip Kelly and company. They've tried four fourth down conversions. They've made three tonight. Why not go for it? Your offense seems to have some momentum, but they're going to try the field goal. Already have missed one from a the field tonight. This one's going to be a 48 yarder. Jackson Rice, the holder. Rob Beard, the sophomore out of Fullerton, California, the kicker. This one's sliding to the right again. Beard, 0 for 2 tonight. Now you know why Chip Kelly might be going for fourth downs. Of course, tonight's game from Cal also being broadcast on 3D. If you've got the uh, 3D equipment and the fans, they all bought the same pair of sunglasses, which is nice. They got that going for them. And they're watching it in 3D. <laughs> We're just seeing it in plain old, plain old television. Yeah. We're just getting to watch it for real. There we go. Well, Cal takes over, first and 10, ball on the 31-yard line, trailing in this game 15-7. to They scored on their off first offensive position and haven't done a whole lot since then. This is going to be a free play, and oh, they're going to blow it dead. Contact was made, that's yeah. why they'll blow it dead. Well, that's one way to get ahead. That's one way to get ahead of the chains. There you Prior go. to the snap, offside, defense, number 96, five-yard penalty, still first down. Deion Jordan, number 96, is the fifth penalty on the Ducks tonight. 
and Chip Kelly knows that they've got to cut down those mistakes. Had 10 last week versus Washington. Well, this allows you to come now back with Shane Vereen and get yourself right. three or you know anywhere from two to five yards and keep yourself right right in schedule where you want to be. Well, they keep trying to throw the football, but it has been unsuccessful since the opening quarter. Manson going up again. Going to show the arm thrown into double coverage and it's going to be incomplete intended for Marvin Jones. Yeah, I, I can't that, that just doesn't seem like a smart throw to me. Well play action pass and he never all he does is step back and throw to his first receiver. He, it's almost as if he decided with the play action the safety will bite and I'll have it over the top. He never once turned looked and found the safety before making the throw. And it's only going to be second and five. So we had a golden opportunity and I guess we're all waiting for him to get back to that run game they showed in that opening drive. But now you've forced your hand with what you can do on a second five. Jeremy Ross in motion. Another little hurdle. Probably only got about a yard. A spectacular yard though. Yeah. Casey Matthews five tackles already tonight. I think he hurdled Cliff Harris the uh, cornerback. Spencer Lardner came in from the wide receiver position laid a big block to get that corner. Orange has got a lot of speed out of the perimeter. OK we're going to get there. Yeah. You got to beat that speed somehow. OK we talked about how it got him ahead of the chains the penalty but they've only picked up one yard on first down and second down so it's third and four. And Manchin's forced to throw it. He got his completion. Keenan Allen, the true freshman out of Greensboro, North Carolina, has his first catch of the night. That's your slot receiver on a, on a simple, just a little slant. Bring him up, straight up, or a smash, just get up and in. He's the slot receiver. Three steps, slant in, get the sticks. Very easy, easy throw for your quarterback to make. Well, he didn't play last week, had to get an MRI. It came back clean at the start of the week was able to practice and they're glad to have this talented true freshman back in the lineup. Well they need to get him the ball. That's one of the things coaches talked about. They need to yep. have him have touches. Green almost breaks it. Gets up to the 48 yard line. Michael Clay had him by the shoestrings. And that's that's a big time tackle to save a lot of yards against your defense with holding on there. See here you pull the left guard. That's Matt Summers Gavin comes around gets the block and just a, a really yeah. good tackle right there by Michael Clay to stop a big game. That wasn't a shoestring that was a good wrap up form tackle like you want your kids yeah. to make. And a second down and seven. Here's Marie. Bounces to the outside. Gets up over the 45 down to the 41 but we do have a penalty flag and we got a little chippiness going on. Holding offense number 72 10 yard penalty replay second down. And Mitchell Schwartz making his 36th start. Well your left tackle there and, and when you have a cutback. Like like you saw Vereen there he cut back outside that left tackle probably got his arm out a little bit just you know the, the officials are looking for the for the big mm -hmm. kids up front. That's what they're, they're looking for is a hand outside the frame of the body. Are you grabbing a little cloth and unfortunately Mitchell Schwartz there got caught. Now Michael Calvin goes by to the right on second and 17. And now the safeties move up for Oregon. And we've got a whistle and I think we're going to have a timeout. Timeout, California. Their first time well, Jeff Tedford and company want to talk about it and so does Chip Kelly with his defense. Well it's Capital One Hockey Night on Versus Monday at 8 Matthew Shane and the Avalanche challenge David Backus in the Blues. And on Tuesday at 7 the Flyers face off against the Canadians Monday and Tuesday nights hockey lives on versus. 
If you're Cal right now, are you getting a little frustrated, Glenn, because it looks so impressive on that opening drive and haven't done a whole lot since then? No, you know, you haven't had a lot of first downs. You haven't been able to really move the chains, and you finally get something going. Now a penalty pulls you back. You get a hold. And the thing is not to panic and don't change who you are. And, and you've got to find a way to get your quarterback in some sort of rhythm, something where he can, he can complete. And we saw this slant for the first down. Try to come up with, I would like to see maybe a play action on first down, get the quarterback movement a little, change that launch point, you know, a little bit of a naked where he's got out, he's got one or two reads. Right. That's always a good way to get your quarterback into a flow, throwing the ball. 49 yards on the first drive for Cal, only 70 yards since that time. Third down, the second down at 17. Manchin's throw the little looking pass to Allen. Maybe gets a yard on the play. Eddie Pleasant was there to greet him, not so pleasantly. No, and, and you know, the thing is, on second and 15, I understand getting the ball out of your quarterback's hand fast, but for a one yard game, now you've really got trouble. There's not much, they, there's not a lot in the playbook at third and 15. Now, you know, it's funny because the Oregon coaches were telling us that if a team can pound the ball against them, that's a problem. That's what Cal did the opening drive, but they haven't been able to do it since. Third down, we'll call it 15. Here comes Oregon's blitz. Manchin back, the deep out. Pass is dropped at the 48-yard line. Should have been caught by Marvin Jones. And you see, that wasn't enough for a first down, but that's a field position changer mm -hmm. if he makes that grab. If he makes that grab, you're punting from the 47-yard line. Instead, you're now punting from back on your own 40. Ball hits him, it's a good throw, should be caught. Well, we saw it on tape of last week's game that he had some drops. We remember the drops he had versus Arizona, and he's got to get to the point where he hangs out of those footballs. It comes down to, can I trust you? If I can't trust exactly. you, I'll find someone I can. Seventh punt of the night for Brian Anger. Cliff Harris back at the 13. A fair catch is called for at the 12-yard line, and that's where it'll be. Timeout, 9-18 left in the third. Oregon leading Cal by just eight. Since the start of the 2008 season, Oregon is 21 and 3 in Pac-10 play. One of those losses coming at the hands of Cal right here in Berkeley. We've got 9-18 left to play in quarter number three. The number one Oregon Ducks leading the Cal Bears 15 to 7. Well, with Glenn Parker, Lewis Johnson, I'm Ron Thulin. Good to have you with us tonight. Is 65,963 have come to Memorial Stadium in Berkeley. 42nd straight game with a crowd of at least 50,000 and the largest crowd of the year. They've come to see this one as Oregon takes over their worst starting field position tonight. Balls at the 12-yard line. Thomas, play action. Loses the football. It's loose. Touchdown, California. Derek Hill. of the of his arm going back we'll take a look very tough to tell a good job of being really agile getting past the block of the guard getting himself in there and swatting at it we'll see what the officials rule here did they feel that his shoulder came forward at all before it got slapped from it well, I think that looked like the perfect Statue of Liberty except it went to the wrong team now they're going to take a look at it. The replay officials had a couple of very good looks, but I think you're right, Glenn. It was right at the top. And, and it, it's tough to tell because the arm goes forward, but the ball looked like, at least on the replay we just saw, that it was loose. Here we go. After review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Touchdown. And I, and I think that's the proper way to do it. Yeah. You can't overturn that. But there's not enough evidence.
They not only said that, you know, they, went, they, they confirmed it. They didn't say it stands. Or they, right. It was a definitive. It's confirmed. And they'll be going for two to try to knock this game up at 15. Oregon is not being part of the timeout of replay bud. Well, that's a correct call. Good yes. job by the officials. Good job by the replay booth for getting it done so quickly too and not taking any momentum away from this football game. You know this is the same crowd that we talked about once before on one of our games very fast the way they get there. Mansion looks left looks left throws way too high for Marvin Jones again. Talmadge Jackson the third on the coverage so the score remains 15 to 13. There you go. He's there. It's slide protection. It's the fade. You want to get that up to him, but unfortunately, too far and way too much on that ball. There's another look. You see big Derek Hill with a good move between the center and the guard. Gets back, kicks that ball right off the palm of Darren Thomas's hand, falls on it for the score. There's another look at it. Good job of pushing the pocket and getting yourself in there. And then having the wherewithal to come down with that ball. Yeah. Lineman's dream, isn't it? Not an offensive lineman, one, I'll tell you that. <laughs> no, 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 no. But he had a nice swim move on Jordan Holmes there, the center, the senior out of Cuba City, California. But that's something that I think Derek Hill's going to remember for a long time. But they're right back in the game. Their offense has been sputtering. And now it's a two point game. Yeah, the difference is that two point conversion that California yeah. was not ready for on Oregon's first touchdown. Well, now they're, we're going to see how Cal's defense steps up to it. But don't forget, this is a very, very powerful Oregon team outscoring their opponents 215 to 48 in the second half. And it's even uglier in the fourth quarter as they outscore their opponents 87 to 7. Up and Cliff Harris back. Waiting to Vecchio's kick. This is going to be a very short kick to Cliff Harris. Nice job on the tackle. They said he was down, and that was pretty obvious. Moving on the field as the runner was down prior to losing possession of the ball. Well, he was down, and Oregon will take over at the 22 yard line. Now, the last two possessions they've had, Glenn, they haven't had good field position. And Cal, of course, the entire game has been in cover one man. That means one safety man and putting seven, eight guys up in the box. Just a straight ahead power running game again by LaMichael James, a sophomore out of Texarkana, Texas, semifinalist for the Maxwell Award. Here's a young man that's leading the country in rushing, but Chip Kelly telling us he's never satisfied. He looks at game tape and says, I could have done that better. Kenyon Barter now in. And this is Barter. The kick has James. And he'll be close to the first down, about a half a yard short. Once again, the time between plays. And it was good enough for a first down by about a half a foot. You really see it on that second third when it's close. They want to get the ball running fast. James, not much. A bunch of Cal Bears around him. They're going to give him a yard pickup. The pressure was put on by Michael Kendrick to Mike Mohammed. He's there to clean things up again. He's got seven tackles. You know, one thing we talk about the tempo of Oregon's offense and the speed, but Cal tried to combat that this week. Now all that running they did in practice the last two weeks to get in shape for us. And it's second down and nine. Here comes the blitz. Nice call by the defense. Defensive coordinator Clancy Pendergast says we're going to blitz him, and it worked. And he brings the safety here coming from the backside. They bring the safety right up in it. Really good job. That's a Katus in there with a really good active blitz coming in from the second there. And it's a loss of three, third down and 12. The crowd is into it. They rush 
four. Thomas has time. Pass complete to Davis, and he is going to be short of the first down. Brought down at the 40-yard line by Cameron Jordan. Jordan is a defensive end, but they drop him in the coverage. But he got enough to make it so that they think about going for it. And they're going to set in the punting. You're right, though. I'm surprised Kelly doesn't go for it. Well, you know, they think about it long and hard. They look to see what, mm -hmm. what the personnel is because they got he got enough to get kind of close. I think they feel that maybe the momentum has switched just a little bit at this point. They don't want to give them any extra added incentive. I think that's a great point, Ron. Ross is going to let this hit. And it will be down at the 10-yard line, 50 yards on the kick. Let's take a look at the Lowe's building towards the VCS. And obviously, we have Oregon, Alabama, and TCU. Those are the teams they have remaining. Oregon still has to host Arizona. Then they go to Corvallis to take on Oregon State. Auburn still has to play at Alabama. That's not going to be easy. And, of course, the SEC championship game. And then TCU at New Mexico. You would think that would be a pretty easy win. And let's not leave by Boise State at Nevada and Utah State. Yeah, I think what you're really looking at those, you look at Oregon and Auburn, the, the two better schools that we talk about as far as ratings, rankings, but also the toughest schedule. You've got Arizona and Oregon State, and you've got Alabama. It's a lot of rivalry games, not to mention good teams that you have to play. That's Ben Vereen able to get up over the 20-yard line. Jack Clark on the stop as we go. Close to six minutes left in quarter number three. Pick up a four on the play. This is a Cal team that averages over 47 points a game at home so far this season in their four wins. Undefeated at home this year. Full house backfield here. They shift out of it. A lot of movement. Manson keeps it, puts his head down. Let's go over to the Oregon sideline where our Lewis Johnson is. Lewis. Ron, you mentioned earlier the second half scoring points for Oregon. You think you said 215 to 48 in the second half. Well, in this 13 to 15 game, it was awfully interesting to hear the defensive coaches tell the guys they went back out on the field. We need a turnover to get back in this thing. Bet they haven't said that very often this season. Boy, you got that right. Good point. Especially considering they've got a two-point lead. That's the mentality that, that you have to have when you're number one. Well, they're plus 11 in turnovers this year. They have forced 28. Third down and three. Important third down. Here comes the blitz. Manson from the backside pass. Tipped in the air incomplete. Could have been intercepted. And we have a penalty flag. Cliff Harris was on Jeremy Ross. Pass interference, defense number 13. Ball will be placed at the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. A lot of Oregon fans here. A lot of booing you could hear to our right side. Well, they're not happy. Now, Chip Kelly saying the ball was tipped and therefore it can't be interference. We'll see what happens. Team, 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 team. I couldn't tell there. Couldn't tell. That certainly looked like good defense, so he got over the top, hit the ball with his hand. I looked, I think that was pretty darn good defense. Yeah. I think that call might have been a uh, a little bit of a bad call on uh, on Oregon there. I don't think the ball was tipped. Though. I don't think Chip had an argument with that one. But nevertheless, it's first down at the 23-yard line for the Cal Bears. Green is stacked up as he gets up to about the 37. And here comes another penalty flag in from way, way in the secondary. Personal foul. Face mask. Defense. 15 yard penalty and an automatic first down. Seven penalties versus Oregon tonight. Let's go back to that previous penalty, the pass interference, and see if Chip Kelly had a, a legitimate beat. Uh, does that ball get tipped? Uh, it didn't look like it got tipped. And then here's the look from the defensive side. Not, that is as good a defense as you can play. I, that is really one to me that deserves a no call. He goes up vertically. His hands come over the top. He hits the ball. I don't think he hits him at all. Well, that's the seventh penalty of the ball game for the Oregon Ducks. Manson wants to put it up in the air. Throws out in the flat. Pass is caught by Will Cap. His first reception of the year, and if that name sounds familiar, 
How about his dad, Joe Cap? Was in the famous game, obviously, versus Stanford years ago. Was the head coach, played here, and also in the NFL. Not bad lineage there, is it? No, he's got the genetics, and he's got the heritage here at Cal Berkeley. Absolutely. And he also is an outstanding special teams player. Pick up a four on the reception. Marie. Caught by the shoe tops by Talmadge Jackson, the third. Able to pick up about a yard on the play. And what Oregon's doing is they're they're putting anytime the receiver goes in motion, the safety stays on the on the last man on the line of scrimmage that's eligible, and the corner crashes to take the cutback away from Vereen. Third down and five for the Bears. Only two of nine so far tonight. Marvin Jones goes wide to the right. They bring the fullback Eric Stevens to the near side. Empty backfield. Oregon only rushes three. Manchin's back. Caught by Marvin Jones. Over the 40, down to the 38 yard line. As many as he has dropped, he catches maybe the hardest one that's thrown to him. We take a look at Marvin Jones on the outside. Easy skinny post. Hand in his face. The ball between the ball gets caught somehow. And for a guy who has dropped some passes that hit him square in the hands, he comes up with a big one. And Manchin's reaction is yes, finally pacing her looked like he got turned around. Allowed for the 17 yard pickup. First and 10 from the 36 yard line. A little razzle dazzle with Jones. He breaks a couple of tackles. Gets inside the 25 down to the 24 yard line. Little handoff with the reverse and watch Manchin as the lead blocker out here. Stalking, putting his body out there, throwing it around. And Jones with some moves. Get himself all those yards. There's another look at it. Well, it wasn't the prettiest of plays, but it was effective. Well, it's part of that rhythm. Yeah. Good point. Cal's offense kind of getting into a little rhythm there. Penalties, a few passes, a few runs. Has started to see a little success. Now Vereen becomes the wide receiver left side, and the officials are going to blow the play dead. And I think Cal called the timeout. That'll be their second timeout Players used here in the second timeout, half. California. Their second charge timeout of the half. Boy, you hate this wasting them now, Glenn. Yeah, and there's way too much time in this game to be wasting timeouts that you're going to desperately need if it stays this close down the stretch. And we've got a lot more college football coming your way on versus November 27th. We're going to bring you a doubleheader featuring two top 10 teams. First at four, Andy Dalton, number three, TCU, Raid, New Mexico. Then at 730, Jim Harbaugh's boys led by Andrew Luck protect their turf against Oregon State only on versus Oregon State, though, a tough loss today. Congratulations, though, to Washington State. The Cougs, long time coming. They finally get off the schneid as far as Pac-10 victories. They upset Oregon State today. Tough loss, though, for Mike Riley, obviously. Yeah, and Coach Wolf up there at Washington State really trying to, trying to do things the right way and put together a program that competes, and he's certainly done that. They've been so much better this year. Finally get themselves a, a Pac-10 win. Yeah, we were up there a couple of weeks ago. We are very impressed how hard his team played. 2.26 left in the third here in Berkeley. First and 10. Balls on the 24 yard line for the Bears, trailing by two. Marie's got a blocker in front of him. Cuts to the inside, gets down to the 18. It looked like he was going to get a lot more than he did on that play. It, it, it did because there was a bubble, but you watch this. Look at the pit block in here. He's going to get a nice lead block from Eric Stevens, and then he gets out Marvin Jones on the perimeter with a block. Green under found that bubble got as many yards as the bubble allowed and then put his shoulders down for one or two more but they'll take seven on first down yeah I think so they'll stay ahead of the chains be pretty happy with a second and three Jeremy Watt Ross wide to the right Marine joins Manchin in the backfield here's Marine down to the 12 yard line that'll be good enough for a first down 
Chad Peppers coming up from that quarterback stop to make the stop. And again, Vereen, downhill, cut back behind the behind the tackle and behind the, the block of your wide receiver Jeremy Ross coming in. Offensive line for Cal getting some movement on this D-line. It's been the safeties and corners that are making the plays for Oregon. And right now, Cal made a few adjustments to get the blocks on those little guys that allow Vereen to get one or two more yards per play. Five rushes, 21 yards on this drive for Vereen. Manson looking, throwing, passes incomplete. Intended for Marvin Jones. Fans wanted a wanted a interference. This one from first blush appears to be even a, maybe more of an interference than the last one. Jones on the slant, trying to find that real estate. Good defensive play comes in the backside of the ball, a little behind the receiver. Probably should have been led in front of him just a bit. Probably would be six for Cal at that point. That brings up a second down and ten from the 12 yard line. Final one minute and 11 seconds here in the third. The number one team in the country holding on to a two point advantage over Cal. Here's Vereen. Cuts back inside, gets inside the five yard line, down to the four. Need to get to the two yard line for a first down. Well, Vereen running behind that left side, getting behind Mitchell Schwartz and Gavin. See the big bodies, the backside, Guerrero, uh, Edwards, and Schwenke. Everybody's a hat on a hat. You get good push on the front side. You get your cut back, blocked, cut on the on the back side. That gives you a lot of room for Vereen to find that bubble and make hay. Third down and two from the four-yard line. Vereen dragged down from behind at the seven-yard line by Zach Clark. Outstanding job by the senior out of Wichita, Kansas. Now he's going to come right on the back side, and this is the problem. He comes unblocked from the between the right guard and the right tackle, and he and, and you've got to be on the same page on the offensive line. You've got to have your communication down and know that you're comboing. You can't leave a guy unblocked on the three-yard line. This will be a 24-yard field goal attempt, and we've got a whistle. Rock Mansion is going to be the holder. And that's the way quarter number three will end. Oregon, the number one team in the country, leading Cal by two. This is the closest anybody has been to Oregon, the number one team in the country after three quarters of play. Jeff Tedford's team trails by two, but they'll be attempting the field goal to take the lead. This is Giorgio Tavecchio. He has not missed from this distance in his career. That's three years. He hesitated. Does it bother him? No. Kick is good. We have a penalty flag, though. Illegal motion. Offense. Kicker was moving forward prior to the snap. Well, he did take that Five step. Five-yard penalty. Replay fourth down. Well, Giorgio, you get another shot at it, partner. And you see he stutters one bit there. And, and the thing is, you can stutter and stop like that if the snap doesn't occur. You have to be set. Yes. Well, Oregon's kicker's done it several times, but he's always been set. They're going to place the ball at about the 19-yard line. So it'll be a 29-yard field goal attempt. Once again, he hasn't missed from this distance in three years either. The left footer's got the good hold. The good snap. That kick is not going to be any good. It went to the right. It looks like he hurried it a little bit. He got a lot of leg behind it. I mean, he was kicking that ball hard. And we took a look from behind. It's a good approach. He just he just puts too much leg on it. Yeah. That thing would have been that thing would have been missed from 60 yards. How about that one, huh? They always tell you to be good from a lot longer. You yeah. don't miss that from any distance. Too much leg behind that one. And Jeff Tedford sees his team's chance to take the lead go away. His first miss from that distance in his career. Now 
Oregon takes over first and ten. It, an emotional change of possession is where Oregon generally comes after you. Once again, the Oregon Ducks have only allowed one touchdown in the fourth quarter this season. They've scored 87 points. They get stronger as the game goes on, or the other team just runs out of gas. Thomas keeps it right side. Up over the 25-yard line, Steve Williams and Michael Kendricks did a nice job closing on Thomas to keep that game to a minimum. Impressed with the speed of the Cal defense there. That looked like a four or five-yard game. Now we have an Oregon player down. It's one of the linemen. You see the double knee braces on him, but as all linemen wear now, and they're going to take a look at him. So let's check in with Lewis Johnson. Lewis, you've been watching LaMichael James this whole game. What have you found out? Well, I've been watching him, Ron, over the last several minutes uh, during Cal's last drive. He was on the sideline, as we see this. I'll be more to get up on the sideline with his left sock off. He was having his left ankle retaped. And I can tell you from observing him, LaMichael James did not look right. He kept looking over at me to see if I saw him. And uh, you think about how Oregon has lived on the legs of LaMichael James, the nation's leading rusher, in the fourth quarter in a two-point game. If he's not right, that could not go well for this team. Absolutely. Mark Asper has checked in now at the right tackle spot for Darian Weems, who went off the field. On third down, Thomas floats this one up in the air, and it is going to be... No, incomplete. He was out of bounds. Mayo did a nice job just getting his hands on it. Well, Derek Thomas, a, a really good job of the exact point of the ball where he wanted it. Mayo goes up. Has to come down with it in bounds. That's a great throw. Tough, tough one to come down with, though. No, right. Mail is just an outstanding receiver. You just love watching that young man play. And yeah, we've got a whistle. The, the ruling on the field. field is under review. Now they're going to take a look at it again. But it looked from that replay that he wasn't able to get one foot down. Well, we take a look. We'll see him come down. Take a look at that first foot. His oh, well, the left foot. His but is left that right foot, foot down though. Well, his left foot comes in balance. All it needs to be done. Does he maintain control throughout the process of the catch? That's the next thing to look at. Or does so, his right foot hit first? Nope. His left foot hits first. He hits the ground. The ball looks like it's moving. Yeah. Maybe that'll be what they'll say. But let's take a look here. Does he have control of that ball? Is the question. I think they're going to say it's an incomplete because he doesn't have control of the ball. The one foot is in. He did a great job of planting that foot, getting that left foot in. Yeah. The ball looks like it just might be resting on top of the DB, Steve Williams. Yeah, I think I think that that's the question. Does he have control of the ball? Well, the Oregon uh, sideline wanted to be a little helpful to the officials, but... Well, the officiating, officiating crew we have here today does a great job of getting every look they can and, and expediting this procedure. As I said, we were with them in Washington State, and they did, we commented on, on right. just very timely the way they get it done. Yeah, they're going to take a look at it. I think they're going to confirm their call that it's incomplete. It's incomplete. After review, the receiver caught the ball. It will be first and ten for the offense at the 50-yard line. Well, I've been wrong in the past. I'm wrong again. Yeah. I, the foot definitely was in bounds. I thought he did not have control of the ball, though. Well, the call goes in Oregon's favor, so instead of kicking it away, they get a fresh set of downs, and they go back to work offensively. That was a 23-yard game, but you have to give credit to Darren Thomas on that just for put getting that ball out there. He really throws the ball well. Oh, he put it where, where he put it in the perfect spot. And now Thomas looks to throw, takes a hit as he lets it go. Passes incomplete, intended for Mail down at the 20-yard line. 
Josh Hill was on the coverage. Well, oh, Mail runs a good route here. Post corner. He's going to come up. He goes in one step and brings it back out. And he's got some real estate right through his hands. As good as the catch on the sideline was, yeah. that's how bad that one is. Well, Josh Hill wasn't sure where the ball was. He got completely turned around back there. He's been turned around several times tonight by Mail. High snap. Thomas pulls it down. This is where he could be dangerous, but he wisely takes a seat instead of trying to take another hit. We'll take a look at how this what this ball does. It's just a little high. It looks like more was just too much on it. Now he could throw it away there, but instead he just takes the dive. But now he's faced with a third and 15. Ball goes back to about the 46-yard line. Third and officially 14. They show the blitz. The Michael. Barrels his way as a penalty flag comes in. Well, Michael James short of the first down. I think they're going to get a face mask here. The flag came from the near side. I think right at the end, as he was trying to get that extra yard, there was a face mask. Like the Michael James doesn't look pleased. No, he doesn't. Maybe they're going to yank it back on him. Which, from where it came from, that's a holding normally is what they'd call. I thought I saw a face mask in there. Chip Kelly bewildered. Now the officials are talking it over, making sure the calls for sure. There is no foul on the play for an illegal block. The block occurred more than 10 yards beyond the line of scrimmage. Well, there you go. I like the fact there that you've go. got a nice explanation that it tells mm -hmm. what's going on. Well, now it's going to be fourth down and less than a yard. If you just joined us on the opening drive of Oregon, they went for fourth down twice. They were successful on one of those. They've gone for fourth down four times tonight. They're three of four. Here we go. James, straight ahead. They pull him back, but the official marks it down at the 39-yard line, so that'll be a first down. Yeah, he got the first. His momentum took him easily over the yard mark. Take a look here. It's a good job by James. Shoulders down, drive the legs. He gets about a yard over that line, and that's where they mark it. Four or five now on third down. Fourth down. And Michael James. This time he's going to lose about three yards. Trevor Guyton is the one with the first hit. Well, Lewis told us that Michael looked like something might be wrong. We're certainly seeing that he doesn't have the burst that he had earlier in the game. Yet they're continuing to go to him. I wonder if he's just fatigued. Loss of four, second down and 14 from the 43. Thomas rolling, sees the pressure. Pass is complete down to the about the 41 yard line to Josh Huff. Now remember what the Ducks have done well all night is just try to get to a manageable fourth down and, and go for it. They've gone for it several times. They're, they're not thinking right now they, if they don't get it, they punt. It's only if they don't get it enough, they punt. Well, it's third down and 12. Josh Huff goes in the slot, the right side. Thomas. They had him and lost him. Gets away. He's got some running room. But he is stood up at the 36-yard line by Mike Mohammed. Well, they're trying to get after him, and they do a good job. They flush him, and now an even better job of eliminating his options out there. Forcing him to either take it out of bounds or go back into the pressure. Michael Kendricks could have had him behind the line of scrimmage. But now it brings up a fourth down and seven. You can see what they've done tonight. Here comes a lot of people. Thomas looking. Loses the football. They're going to call it an incomplete pass. His arm was moving forward. It doesn't matter. Cal takes over on downs. Cal's defense rising to the challenge in this game. Keeping the tempo where they want it. Getting the shots on the quarterback. All the things we talked about, they've been successful in doing. And we take a look here. This pocket, 
He's got one chance to throw the ball, then the pocket collapses. He realizes coverage is too good. It's an incomplete pass ball going forward. But credit the coverage down the field and then the push in the pocket. Only 247 yards so far offensively for Oregon. This is a team once again that averages 567 yards. McCow will take over on the 36 yard line with 11 and a half to play in the ball game. Green left side got a hole up over the 40 to the 44 yard line. I go back to what Nick Aliotti was telling us. If people pound the ball on them, then they're in trouble. We saw it on the first drive. We saw it on the last drive of Oregon. Yeah, and especially in a tight game. But you look at the leverage, your defense, your offensive linemen. They've got good leverage. They're big bodies on big bodies. And Vereen doing a good job of understanding. Take a step, take a step, find the hole, get north and south, and you can run through some tackles. But in a close game, you can pound on them. The problem is most teams, they get so far behind, they don't get a chance to do that. That's right. On second and three, Manson looks to put it up. I'm not sure who he was throwing to. I'm not sure he's sure who he was throwing to. There was nobody really within 10 yards of that football. If you have a young quarterback like this, and young, he is a junior, he's been in the system a while, but I'm sure Jeff Tedford doesn't want to make it too complicated for him right now. I mean, you're two points down to the number one team in the country. It's like, you got to keep it simple. Yeah, the last thing you do is beat yourself. You, you, first off, you got to get this first down, but they will, they got to keep it simple enough and give them very few reads. They need three for the first down. Here comes the pressure. Nice pass, Manson. First down to Marvin Jones. Marvin Jones, a couple of big catches in this second half, particularly at distance. Manchin with that big extension, nice throw, puts it right on Jones. Jones takes a little shot for it, but Jones comes has come up with a couple of big catches here in this game. His only two catches in this game have been in the second half. And it's first down the Cal Bears at the 49-yard line. Keenan Allen goes wide to the left. Stevens and Green in the backfield. Green does not get by that first wave as Oregon had eight guys in the box. Casey, Casey Matthews, seven tackles tonight. And Casey Matthews closes distance fast. I talk about run fits. Just watch him come right through the backside gap. There's, there's color in the front side, and that forces the ball to the backside gap. So many times you hear me talk about, well, there's great blocking up front, but the, it's the backside cut. I don't mean you're cutting a guy, mm -hmm. but you cut the defense in two, and that opens the hole. That time Casey Matthews played a gap behind really well. And of course, his dad play was an All-American linebacker at USC and a 19-year vet in the NFL. Loss of three, second down at 13, and that pass is tipped. Right at the line of scrimmage. Nice job by Josh Cadu. You know, you look at Josh Cadu, number 56, the linebacker for Oregon, and you watch film. He has turned into an outstanding linebacker. And you couple him up with Pacinger and Matthews, that's quite a trio. Yeah, he's one of those. He's, he's got some range. He's got some jumping ability. He plays kind of violently. It's just a matter for him of just getting another year in here under his belt. Now third down and long. Only Vereen joins Manchin in the backfield. Oregon creeping up to the line. Here they come with five. Manchin reading the D. Pass thrown. Caught. No, they're saying it's incomplete. Stretching out was Keenan Allen, but he was bobbling it. Yeah, the ball hit the ground. He did a nice job of getting out there on it. You'll take a look here in the slot. He's up, and now it's on the skinny post. He looks back. Ball gets there, but it bounces underneath, and he traps it with his mm. body. Good job by the official, the rear back judge, to see that. So Marvin Jones has had a couple of balls that should have been caught tonight, and now Keenan Allen had a ball that could have been caught tonight. And Cliff Harris standing awaiting the punt back at the 12-yard line. Kick and this may make it into the end zone. And it does. 54 yards on the kick. We've got 925 left in the ball game. The number one team in the country with a two-point lead. Nine minutes and 25 seconds left to be played in the game in Berkeley, California, along with Lewis Johnson.
And Glenn Parker, I'm Rob Thule, the number one team in the country, only up by two. But next week, we head to Boston for the game, Harvard versus Yale. Coverage begins at 12 o'clock Eastern, only here on Versus. And now Oregon takes over. Once again, nobody has held them to under 42 points this year. All their numbers are down, including LaMichael James's numbers. He gets the call up to the 25-yard line, pick up of about four and a half. Mike Mohammed in double-digit tackles tonight with 10. Oregon has not gotten in any sort of tempo or rhythm this entire night. They have been stopped soundly by Cal. Credit Cal's defense. Whoop, whoop, whoop. And there was contact. Dead ball, offside, defense, number 76. Five-yard penalty. Now that'll move the ball. Penalty results in a first down. Good enough for the first down. And Chip Kelly squad's got it on the 30-yard line inside of nine minutes to play in the ball game. James running, jumps over a couple of would-be tacklers and gets up to the 35-yard line. Pick up of about five on the play. And this is where Oregon really wants to start picking it up again. On that second and third down, they want to get moving fast. So you take a look. That clock is ticking. How fast are they going to get this playoff? Well, Justin Hoffman checks in, the wide receiver number 81, and he's on the near side. Second down and five. James to the right side. And he's got it. Looking for some running room, and he's going to be buried. And will lose a couple on the play. Nice penetration at the point of attack. And James is slow to get up. And look at the color that it shows. All the yellow. In every gap, there's yellow. And Michael James, nowhere to go. It's third down and six. Kenyon Barter is checked in for James in the backfield. Thomas looks left, throws for Barnes, got it. And it might be short of the first down, and it is. He had to get, oh, well, now they're spotting it. It looks like it would be the first down. Very close, no matter what. They're going to take a look. He needed to get over the 40. And their offensive lineman cut, they get it out there to Barnes. Oh, I'll tell you what. I'm Jeff Tedford. I may want to take a look at that. <laughs> I, I'm right there with you. It didn't look like he got. No. Enough for the first for me. And it is a first down at the 40-yard line. Carter again, right side, and he gets up over the 45-yard line to the 46. Mike Mohammed has been the man tonight defensively for Cal. 11 tackles in the ball game. You know, Oregon doesn't do a lot. They have about eight basic schemes they come at you with. They just adjust well off of those schemes. So there might be eight basic schemes, but if they can adjust on each one of them five to ten different ways, that's a big playbook all of a sudden. Now we got an equipment problem, so Michael Kendricks has to head over to the trainers. And Barter remains in the ball game. James went out. He looked a little winded. And got up slowly after his last carry. Here's Barter, right side. Got some running room. Got the first down. Close to the 45-yard line. Well, again, same concept. Watch the right side of the line. You've got Kaiser and Asper over there getting just enough of a hook block to hold the perimeter and get them to the second level up to the wide receiver's block. Well, C.E. Kaiser did a nice job holding on to his block. And now we've got another Oregon player down. Third one tonight. That's a Cal player, yeah. A Cal player, I Cal mean. Player. Third one tonight. He's pointing to his stomach. And it's Kendrick Payne this time. That's the second time I think he's gone down. We'll take a break with six minutes and 54 seconds left in the ball game. Oregon clinging to a two-point advantage over Cal, 15 to 13. And you've 
seen a couple of players, three players go down. Now take a look right here, right in the middle of your screen, 96. Oh, down he goes. He, he looked like he, he was hurt. He was struggling. He looked to the sidelines, and maybe they said, if you're hurt, go down. Yeah, well, he did. It looks like he just dropped down. He's on the far side of the field, but Oregon has it first and ten on the 46-yard line. Barner remains in the ball game, and Michael James remains out. You know, sometimes guys want to play with an injury, but the but coaches say, no, go down. You're hurt. Get down. Now creeping up to the defensive line. Play clock goes at 14. Plenty of time. Now it's at seven. Oh, right side. Has an opening. Inside the 30 yard line. Penalty flag is thrown back at the 40. All right, this is the same play they ran earlier where Kaiser and Asper get that edge. 10 yard penalty, replay, first down. They go after Asper because he's got that edge, the right tackle. Take a look at number 79, Mark Asper here. He's going to be your right tackle right out here. Now watch him. He gets in outside the frame of his body, and there is no way to separate if you're the defensive man, Michael Kendricks. That's why the edge was so easy to get, and it was a hole. And that brings up a nice gain by Kenyon Barner back. They mark it now at the 48-yard line. First down and 16 as we hit the six-minute mark of quarter number four. Picks up six. Mohammed has a dozen tackles in the ball game. Can't say enough about number 18 right there. Not only is an outstanding football player, but he's a National Football Foundation Scholarship Award winner. He's a finalist for the Campbell Award. That's an incredible young man. He's having a, an incredible game tonight. Second down and 11 from the 47. Time on the play clock, it's at nine. Barner up over the 45, down to the 42 yard line. Well, you credit Oregon here. They went from a first and 15 to a second and 12 to a third and seven or eight now. They're just going to eat that yardage up and try to, if they can't get the four first down, at least they'll get manageable fourth downs. Third down and six, and Oregon not with that hurry up offense on this drive. They're taking their time, and both the play and the game clock took away. And that's the strategy. You're sitting at four and a half minutes to go. How fast do you score, and how much time do you give Cal to come back on it? Well, they're going to have to call a timeout because the play clock got down to timeout, one. Oregon, their first charge timeout of the half. This will be a 30 second timeout. We want to take you back because obviously Cal had a chance to tie the game up. They missed a two point conversion, but then they got in a position to kick a field goal. But the stutter step by Tavecchio was a penalty. They had to kick it again. Yeah, a chance to go up by one there. Instead, they're still down by two. So, oh boy, he's going to remember that. So they miss a two point conversion. They miss the field goal, and Jeff Tedford's team could have had the lead. Will he get another chance? Right now, it's third down and six at the 42 yard line. 426 left to play. One thing to know about Tavecchio, he can kick it a long way if he has to. Absolutely. 304 total yards for Oregon tonight. Barner joins Thomas in the backfield. Thomas keeps it. And he'll get the first down as he stretches over the 35-yard line. And we have not seen a lot of that QB keep in the second half. 
Take a look at the mesh and the ride. He decided right away when Cameron Jordan cut broke down, he was gone. Very good read by Darren Thomas there. And now they speed up play a little bit. But they look over to the sideline. Huff in the slot. DJ Davis to the near side. Jeff Mayle to the far side. Not much on the run. Cameron Jordan right there to stop Kenyon Barner. Now Oregon has slowed down. What they were doing is about every 20 seconds, 23 sometimes, 17 others. Now we take a look. We'll see if they're actually slowing down or is it just perception. Second down and eight. So they get ready to snap it at that 20 second mark, but now you're all the way to 32, 33, and that clock's ticking. Thomas just hands it off straight ahead, running again by Barner, gets down to the 30 to the 29 yard line. Let's check in with Lewis Johnson. Well, Ron, continuing storyline here with 256, 255 left in the game as the cat and mouse continues with the clock. LeMichael James, the leading rusher in the nation, still on the sideline. I've watched him hobble to the bench twice and go back, and now back out on the field, but he has been lifting since he's been on the sideline. Well, you know, he had that one carry, and he was very slow to get up. And then Barter took the majority of the snaps after that. And there's a look at LeMichael James, and tonight James only 70 yards rushing on 24 carries. Third down and four. James takes a couple of hits and he will get the first down inside the 25 down to the 24 yard line. That was just pure effort on the part of Michael James. Now, you, know, you take a look at what Michael James does here. He sees color. It's a little bit of an awkward mesh, but then he gets his shoulders forward and just continues to pound to get his one or two yards, three yards, four yards. It's not pretty, but it's keeping the yeah. chains moving and the clock ticking. And James remains in. Seven to snap it. James spun around and he is going to be stopped at the line of scrimmage, maybe lost a yard. Well, tonight's Pizza Hut favorite matchup tonight. It's been a good one, but Mike Muhammad has gotten the better of this one. 12 tackles, a tackle for a loss, and a sack. And LaMichael James well below his season rushing average. Only a short amount of time left. A minute and 45, and the number one team in the country clinging to a two-point lead. Static finish, Ron. All right, Kevin, you've got it right. It is crazy, and it's a little odd game tonight as the number one scoring team in the country has been held to 15 points. And once again, going back to the series between these two, Cal has won the last three games played here at Cal. The last Oregon win here was back in October 2001. But this has been an impressive drive for Oregon. 14 plays, 13 have been rushes. One has been a pass. James, five carries, 13 yards on this drive. And it's second down and 11 from the 25-yard line. James is still in, and he's got the football. They try to string him out. We have a penalty flag flies in as he gets inside the 20. Sean Katus on the hit. And that may be another penalty. That'll be the ninth Holding against Oregon. Offense number 54. 10-yard penalty. Replay second down. Yeah, Jordan Holmes, the center, gets caught. I think he had to get a good grab on Derek Hill there and yanked him down. It just, you know, when you're on the backside of a play and once it breaks down, it's it's hard it's hard not to hold when the play doesn't have rhythm. Right. And when the when the guy starts making moves and all of a sudden he's going to rust, you tend to hold a little because you're trying to help your guy out. 72 yards and penalties tonight for the Ducks. On nine penalties, 138 to play in the ball game. Not sure what they're doing here. Holding on the offense, penalty is declined. Third down. Okay. A little strategy by Jeff Tedford. Yeah, I'm not sure, but I honestly, 
when you come to third down, this is a team that is looking, I think, for a field goal to make this a, 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 a touchdown game. I'm anxious to see why he didn't take that penalty to push him back a little bit. But it's third down and five. They're at about 30 percent tonight on third down. The Ducks are. Michael James puts his head down and barrels down to the 11-yard line. Good enough for the first down. And Oregon doing a great job here. Let's take a look at the offensive line. Great blocking across the way. Good backside shoulder. And you know what? Michael James runs right through the tackle, an arm tackle. That shows strength. He might be hobbling, but he's showing some strength here. And I think Oregon is just going to take a knee here. They're not going to do anything else. They'll be very happy to get out of this stadium yeah. with this win. I'll tell you, congratulations to Chip Kelly, because they could try to pound this down and try to put some more points on the board, and they're not going to do it. Cal is out of timeout, so they cannot stop the clock. Congratulations, though, to Oregon is they're going to go to 10 and 0 on the year and they'll probably remain the number one team in the country and Cal put up quite a fight as they did against Arizona a few weeks ago but they're going to come up on the short end of the stick. But it was a heck of a game for both teams and Chip Kelly is going to be glad he's got the win. They take it one game at a time they call them faceless opponents and that's the guy right there that had a chance to give him the lead. But he did the little stutter step. On the field goal attempt, and Giorgio Tavecchio had to kick it again, and he missed it. Well, Oregon, and when you have the target on your chest, you're going to have games like this once in a while. You get one of these a year, and Oregon just got theirs. And Lewis Johnson's with Coach Kelly. Lewis. Well, Chip, you moved to 10-0, and 0, but is this one of those wins where you wipe your brow with a two-point win? We won. That's all we care about. Talk well, about you got to care about the way you played. It was slow in the beginning. You didn't score have the kind of offense that you typically have over 500 yards. What was going on tonight? Yeah, we don't care about that. I keep asking those questions. It doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is we got two more points in them, and we're 10-0 right now. Well, Michael James seemed to be struggling there toward the end. Again, a great win by your team, but he struggled with that left ankle. What's happening with him? Any concern as the oh, season yeah, continues? We'll talk about it. we got a week off next week, then we got to get ready to play Arizona. Uh, another really, really good football team, and we know to win. Uh, we got to play really well, and to win on the road in this league is a difficult thing to do, and, and uh, we got one today. We won 15-13. Give us a sense of what Jeff Tepper presented for you here, a difficult uh, defensive matchup on his side. Well, they did a nice job. We talked about it going in. Their front seven's outstanding and did a really good job against us. All right, Chip, congratulations on the win. Thank you. Ron? All right, a win is a win, and he has a two-point victory, 15-13 over Cal, but it came down to one of the key plays of the ball game. Giorgio Tavecchio attempting the field goal. And his first attempt, he took that little step. That kick was good, but the penalty was thrown. He had to go five yards back, and then, Glenn, you said he just got too much leg in there. Yeah, I think he just had a little anger, just put too much leg in it. You don't have to kill that ball. He did. He pulled it. He hooked that ball out. And unfortunately for Cal, that was the go-ahead and would have made it much, much tougher on Oregon. They would have had to play for points as opposed to playing the clock. And that's Tavecchio's first miss from that distance in his career. But it was a hard-fought game, but the number one team in the country will remain undefeated on the year. Oregon goes to 10-0. On the season, and their record is perfect. A hard-fought victory, but a victory nonetheless. The final score once again, Oregon to defeat Cal 15 to 13 in a dandy in Berkeley, California. For Glenn Parker, Lewis Johnson, and our entire versus crew, I'm Ron Thulin. Now let's go to the Craftsman Post Game Show.